Good John. evening and welcome to the January 13th meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to introduce the board. To my far left, Selectman Mike Pierce. To my immediate left, Selectman Phil Bean. To my far right, Selectman Mike Pluff. To his left, Selectman Mary Louise Woolsey. Um, to my immediate right, Town Manager Fred Welch, and I'm uh, Chairman Dick Nichols. Um, before we get into the first item in, on the agenda, I just wanted to comment that we have what appears to be a very busy agenda tonight, particularly with trying to wrap up all the issues to do with Warren articles at the end. So. I would appreciate it if, if, if all parties could make um, it go as succinctly as possible during the course of tonight. Um, first item on the agenda is public comment. Would somebody from the public wish to comment? Arthur? Our Moody, 3 Thompson Road. I thought I'd uh, comment on your Church Street uh, parking lot uh, situation. <coughs> Uh, the big increase in rent once they opened up that uh, bag of worms. Uh, I think it was the 80s that the selectman put in an article at town meeting to authorize them to at least a lot. <coughs> well, the first year it was 10000 They didn't put any money in the budget for it. <laughs> <coughs> and I asked <coughs> about that. And uh, State Rep. <coughs> Ken Malcolm went up to the stage and gave the moderator a dollar to open up the account <laughs> and they found the money for the lease. In the, when I was a selectman in the early 90s, the town manager at that time told me that they had upped it to 12000 and he had sent off a check. And I said, well, that's in the hands of the boy, board of selectmen. And so he went out at 5 p.m. in front of the mailbox and got the check back. <coughs> and the selectman decided to offer 11000 and that's what it became. We did a lot of things for the church. We had to have a cop there Saturday afternoon and all morning Sunday. The several masses that they had the, uh, at St. Patrick Church and uh, made sure that the parkers got in the right area. And we had to put a chain link fence around it, $1,000 for a shed, and, uh, which of course didn't have a bathroom. <coughs> I don't think the transfer station guy at the gate has a bathroom either. But uh, uh, the uh, it's now going to be up about seven or eight thousand, and then increase a dollar, a thousand a year. So it's very expensive. If we hadn't at least it, the precinct was ready to lease it. <coughs> The other thing I'd like to mention is the, is the 30th, uh, 20th, 20th anniversary of <coughs> when members of uh, commissioning, submarine com commissioning committees in the four cities in the country that were <coughs> namesake cities of the USS Hampton, Los Angeles class submarine, uh, went on a cruise off Florida. I know five from my committee here in this, this committee, this uh, Hampton went. We call it a Tiger Cruise, and uh, it was for so-called VIPs. But uh, the mayor of uh, South Carolina, Hampton, Hampton County, Hampton City, who was an undertaker, he got stuck in the hatch. <laughs> uh, it was down at, off of Fort Fort Everglades, Florida, is what they call the place. All it is is a pier. And we were standing there out in the wild, and around the bend came the submarine. <laughs> uh, they allowed us to even steer the thing, a billion dollar piece of a uh, warfare type uh. ship. And uh, they, do they dove, and we, we spent the afternoon on Florida, uh, early January 1994, a few months after it was commissioned into the Atlantic Fleet in Virginia. And now it's deployed to the Pacific, Western Pacific, in, uh, as we're beefing up our Navy in response to the CHICOMs who have 
beefed up their navy in the area of Southeast Asia. And that's why I'm wearing the commander's hat <laughs> today with the uh, scramble eggs. The first captain of the USS Hampton was David Antonitis, and he gave each chairman of the four cities, Hampton, Iowa, Hampton, South Carolina, and Hampton, Virginia, and Hampton, New Hampshire, a commander's hat. And I thought I'd recognize that, that uh, the ship is still being used in the U.S. Navy. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Candace? Thank you. My name is Candace Stelmack, 488 High Street. I noticed on your agenda for tonight in old business is Gristmill Dam restoration funding extension. And is that your $400,000 one, or is that my tiny little one? So sure. mine shouldn't be a, a, a dam thing at all. Interactive. It's for the okay. building. It's, it, yeah. it's, it's the article for right. um, retaining the funding the over five years. I dollars one because you might affect my luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anybody else from the public? Okay. Seeing none. First that in the agenda, first appointment is uh, Martha Stone, director of Crossroads House. Uh, Martha requested an appointment for tonight um, to, she ba basically became aware of the fact that we've removed Crossroads House from our um, aggregate um, charity warrant article. Um, Fred and I spoke on towards the end of the week and felt that it was reasonable to allow that appointment. So, Martha? Did you want to have community uh, announcements and so forth before you do that, or you want Thank to you, Mike. start now? My favorite one, we'll go back to that. Martha's already up here. You sure? Yeah. Yeah, go okay. ahead. <laughs> okay, great. Thank well, you. Let me forget it again. Good evening. Um, as introduced, um, Martha Stone, I'm the Executive Director of Crossroads House. I appreciate um, having a few minutes tonight to speak with you. I know you do have a very full agenda. I serve on the school board in my town, so I appreciate how long these meetings can go. So <laughs> I'll try to be succinct. Um, I brought with me tonight also um, Ken Ortman, who's the Director of Housing and Community Development for the Stratford County CAP Agency, who, um, as you'll hear what I'm going to talk about tonight, is sort of the specialist in that area. So I wanted to just um, have the opportunity to tell you a little bit about the history and what's happening and what my concern is around the funding for this year. So Crossroads House has had a long-standing relationship with the town of Hampton. We've been receiving funding since 2002. I believe it has been consistently at $15,000 a year. And as you mentioned, um, this year the um, recommendation came from the town to remove that funding. There is a new um, program that we have participated in called Coordinated Access. And I wanted to just take a moment and explain what that is um, and how that affects the services that we deliver. Um, before going any further, I mean, for the benefit of the doubt, I assume everyone knows what Crossroads House is, but for those who may not, we're a 96-bed shelter located in Portsmouth serving families, single men, single women families year-round, um, both emergency and transitional shelter, and we've been doing so since 1982, so just for the record. Um, so the mission of coordinated access, just to read it, um, is to provide individuals and families at risk of experiencing homelessness with a single point of entry to access shelter and provide diversion and prevention assistance to ensure they receive the right services at the right time. So essentially what we've done is participating with the other shelters in our community. We have centralized the one point of access in that there is literally one phone number. So now someone who is homeless seeking services can call one place and each day all the participating shelters call in how many beds or lack of beds we may have available that day so that um, we can be thoughtful about making sure that the person who is the most vulnerable on that day gets housed because we all have a limited capacity in how many people we can shelter and it's important to make sure that if someone is in a very vulnerable situation we can get that person inside and sheltered. Um, the program is coordinated access is something that is mandated by HUD it's mandated that shelters um, receiving federal funding have this in place by the end of 2014. The Seacoast area, Crossroads House included, um, is fortunate to have been um, uh, 
addressed this issue early on in that we participated in a pilot program. So for the past three years, we've been collaborating with area agencies to come up with a way to um, create this coordinated access program. It launched this past July, and so we've really, we're just like six months in. It's a new program. and. Um, it's working very well. We meet regularly with all the local welfare offices, and I can tell you that Hampton is the only town or city that has communicated to us that it is a real problem or concern for them. All of the other towns and cities are meeting regularly and reporting that it's working very successfully. The number of calls that are coming into their offices is, is reduced dramatically. Um, and we feel like we are identifying people who in need in a very effective way. I would also like to just note that this new way to get into a shelter in no way changes our service area, which is Stratford County, Rockingham County, Southern York County. It in no way changes our capacity. The number of beds that we had before this program is no different than the number of beds we have now. And it does not change um, who we're servicing. There's no difference in the preference of the people who are who we're serving and coming from different areas. Um, there was a newspaper article that was reported, and I just wanted to point out there were several inaccuracies in that. So just to make sure that um, I have the opportunity to clarify, uh, it was noted that primary recipi recipients coming to Crossroads House would now be from Dover, and that's inaccurate. We have always served folks from that area, and will continue to do so, but they're not the primary recipients. Um, and there was also a comment that we'd be shipping people further and further away, and that's also not the case. Again, it's the same shelters participating in the same way. Um, one of our concerns, and I've been told that the town of Hampton has the same priority that we do, and that we want to provide people who are homeless the opportunity to get safe, supportive shelter in their own community as close as we can keep them to their own community. So we don't want people to be have have to be shipped further away, if you will, or sent to shelters further away. We're bound by the number of beds we have available, but it's my understanding that um, the town of Hampton has sent people out of state to Massachusetts, and to me, that doesn't meet their needs in the best way possible. We'd both like to be able to keep people local and provide the services that um, we are able to with all the collaborations and relationships we have with the agencies in the area that provide supportive services in addition to shelter. Um, the funding relationship we have right now with the town, we've had a partnership for all these years and we, I'm here tonight to say I'd like to maintain that partnership. Um, the funding is very important to us. Crossroads House, the majority <coughs> of our funding comes from donations. So every time we have a cut like this, it means we have to raise more money. This year, we have to raise 73% of our budget from private donations. Mm -hmm. So a cut like this hits us hard. It's not like our expenses go down. That means I'd have to raise another $15,000. Um, a lot of shelters in the state of New Hampshire, including one as close as Dover, have arrangements where they bill towns directly for the services received by the folks that stay there. So this is not something that, that I necessarily want to move towards to, to become more of a vendor providing the service to the town, but it is something that I would have to consider if the funding was not restored. Um, I can just give you an example, and I'm going to pass out some information that I'll leave with you. We have um, statistics going many years back, and I've brought these for you to show how many people we have served. Last year, my numbers indicate I served 33 people from the town of Hampton. I believe it was 30 adults and three children, and they stayed a total of almost 2,300 nights combined of shelter. So even at a modest rate of $20 a night, that would be over $45,000 if I was direct billing the town. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from my perspective, and again, I'll pass this around, um, these numbers show, you know, it was 2,300. The year before, it was over 3,000. The year before, it was just under 2,000. The year before, it was 1,100, 2,500. So you get the idea of how many people we're serving. I don't have any reason to think that the number of people who are homeless are gonna, is going to change mm -hmm. because of the situation. So um, I know I spoke really quickly. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'd like to I'll hand this over um, to pass out. What you'll find attached here are charts. And um, just to explain, we count bed nights. It's the total. So if a family came and stayed with us um, for a week, that would be seven bed nights we count. Um, 
with you'll see the cost of a bed night. What I did is averaged out based on the $15,000 funding that Hampton has provided to Crossroads House. To, uh, there's a chart that shows what that cost per night was. Last year it was about $6.50, $6.50. And then you'll see there's a chart that looks like this that has the total number of people we've served and the total number of nights. So we track all this. And as a matter of fact, this new coordinated access entry is going to help us track data even better because right now when people ask how many people are we not able to provide shelter to mm -hmm. because we operate at capacity people always say oh it's bitterly cold you must be really busy and we are but I follow up by saying we're as busy in August as we are in the middle of January homelessness well the effect of the weather can certainly we have to get people inside on those bitterly cold nights we are busy year-round so um, so that's the information that I wanted to share. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And I did have one last question. I noticed on your agenda that the public hearing on the budget is, is it tomorrow night and the snow date is the 21st? Is that accurate? It, it is 21st. It is, so it's not tomorrow night? It, it, it has changed, yeah. It, it is has changed, okay. Yep. So is there a new snow date as well? No, that's the last it, night. It, it has to be by the third Tuesday. Okay, so the, it's not tomorrow. It is just the 21st. Yeah. And would I, as a non-Hampton resident, be able to speak at that if in the That public? would be a decision of, of the chairman of the uh, budget committee at okay. that time. Okay, shouldn't be a problem. Okay, all right. So I'll pass this out if you want to pass it over. Okay, um, questions um, from Arthur from the board? I just have a quick question. Do you function in any way to refer when you're full? Mm -hmm. And there's still a need, obviously. Do you do you have the capability of referring, or just some somebody else takes care of it? Well, now with this coordinated access program, all, each day everyone in this Seacoast community is calling one phone number to um, identify where there is space. So when so the nice one of the efficiencies of this is every morning my staff calls the person answering the phone to say. Tonight we have no beds for families. We have one bed for a female single resident and one bed for a male, for example. Yeah. And so throughout the day, he can then evaluate who is most desperately so in it's need. It's fluid. It's very fluid. And you're spilling over to other facilities in exactly. the area. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So I mean, our goal is to keep people as close to where they're coming from as possible. But the most important <coughs> thing is getting them shelter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that means sending people to shelters out of the area. So that does happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I have a comment I'll make. We have to make a decision on that tonight. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. unless you guys want to swarball this before we make that decision, I suggest you take a little break to read it. But the other thing I suggest is <clears throat> in the future, if we have a problem like this, you might want to come in a little earlier because tonight we're going to be pressed. And I like to cause trouble and delay the meetings, but I won't be able to do that tonight. So this probably won't get as much consideration as what you might find desirable. But I do have a, a question in relation to the, the situation. I have the impression, and I may be wrong, that our welfare lady cannot call you directly to make an arrangement directly. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's the big change in my understanding is that's one of the big concerns is that um, up until this new time, um, the way she, your welfare officer was able to access shelter was just calling the shelter directly right. and that was true for people seeking shelter as well so we do direct everyone now through this one centralized point again for the reasons that I mentioned I mean she's still welcome to call and and I came in and um, earlier in December and I think it was close to two hours your town manager was very generous with his time Ken and I came in and we explained this concern that we had Ex so I did come in earlier um, to try to express my concern for this and noted that we are happy to work with your welfare officer um, I've observed I, I don't quite know what to say she was participating with this in the beginning I think there were some like any new program there were some rocky starts and some frustrations on her part which is fair and we've addressed a lot of those issues we've tried to learn from all the welfare officers but I can tell you last week every single welfare officer from other towns in this community are participating and really finding it mm -hmm. to be working well and even offered their support to say if it would help the town and I know your time is constrained you won't have the opportunity to hear from them but they offered to you know chime in just to say that it is working for them and while it is a different way in that she cannot call directly like she used to our 
our relationship as a provider of shelter has not changed. It's simply consolidating literally the front desk of who's picking up the phone to <coughs> determine if there's a bed. I think one of the concerns I had also was if, let's say, Dover or Rochester or whatever had an overflow of people compared to us and they come down, so to speak, and occupied all of your facilities, mm -hmm. then we would be sort of left out in the cold. Sure, yeah. I, and, and we talked about that. Um, there is no difference now than the past 30 years we've been doing business in that any town at any moment could have mm -hmm. a bigger demand for services than another town. So this way to access shelter in no way changes that. That's, that's always been the case. If there was, we serve a lot of people from Stratford County. We always have. So our okay. ability to serve Hampton, it hasn't changed. Like the same so it's going to be more or less the same, probably forecasting can be more or less the same as it was before by occupancy. Exactly. Our capacity to serve hasn't changed. The needs of the towns haven't changed. It's simply the way that we are allocating the beds on a daily basis. So while there might be a feeling that, that somehow our ability to meet the needs of the town of Hampton has changed, it's just not accurate. It's, so, go ahead. It's, really yeah. calling a different phone number. One more point. Yep. So this is HUD money. Did they give you special grants or something to set this all up? The United Way funded the, um, the process to create this coordinated access program. United Way, not HUD. Correct. But it is a HUD mandate that we implement mm. this by the end of the year. We were fortunate that we had a group of people who were willing to get in front of this, design it so it worked for us and for the communities that we serve. Mm -hmm. So we, we rolled out at the state level, we're being told, you need to start to think about this, you need to have this done by the end of 2014, and we're able to say, we've done it, we're already piloting it, it's working well. So the rest of the state is now looking to us to see how is that working. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Any other uh, questions, Mary yeah. Louise? A procedural question. Since the Board of Selectmen in its wisdom removed the Health and Human Services uh, function from the budget in well, about 10 years ago, Crossroads has been in the list of Health and Human Services on the warrant article to the best of my recollection. So this year was an aberration because we weren't comfortable with the way that we thought the change was being made. Can we, instead of getting a special money article, simply restore the crossroads line into the Health and Human Services article? We, we could certainly do that if somebody wanted I to make I would a think motion. that would be more expedient than running around fiddling with, with special articles. And oh, I don't think we're talking about fiddling. I, I, I think if, if we do restore the funding, the way to do it would be to change that article by yeah. just uh, insert that line. Right. Correct. Um, okay. If there are no other questions, Fred, do you have any comments you'd like to make? Well, Martha's sort of giving you an overview of what's mm -hmm. going on from her perspective, <coughs> and and she's given us a lot of information too. Um, her agency has indicated that they actually was 34 people you served, not 33. Um, yeah. So they gave us a list, and um, we're able to verify 12, which is not unusual because a lot of people come to them and say I don't have any identification I don't have a yeah. driver's license oh, yeah. I have nothing yeah. but yeah. I'm, I'm from Hampton I'm from Hampton right uh -huh. and, and what you'll find uh, and what we find have found to be very prevalent is that people want to live in Hampton and when they leave crossroads they want to come to Hampton because they say there were residents in Hampton so uh, the reality I think is that it's it's almost a, a two-to-one situation uh, where they're really from Hampton. I mean, uh, there are streets on here that we don't even have uh, <laughs> listed as their street of address, and, and, and I, we find that to be frustrating, of course. Um, the other thing is that uh, these, most of these people apparently were walk-ins. Oh, um, oh at, at Crossroads well, itself. No shelter can refuse a walk-in because it's the law. You can't oh, do right. that. And they, they may have to sit you in a chair in a ward room, but they have to take you for, yeah. for that evening because they can't put you out into the, into the wild, so to speak. Um, so we have a lot of people who do that. Uh, and I know that's a problem for you folks as well. So um, one of the things that we are very concerned with is the fact that we no longer have any intake. People don't come to us. They go to either Crossroads or they, they call Crossroads and they're referred to the, the general, the general uh, distribution center. 
uh, which then farms them out. We, if we call Crossroads, we're referred there as well. Everybody is. Yeah. Doesn't matter where you call, uh, or from or to. Uh, you're going to end up with that phone number at the general distribution facility, and they will assign you to some place, wherever that may be. If there is no place, you're on your own. Uh, what's been happening is that um, these people call, they're referred there. Um, and then at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, sometimes 10 minutes to 5, they come in here and say, I need to fill out a welfare application. And um, we're putting in a lot of overtime doing that. Mm. So we're changing hours of our personnel to take care of that. We don't have a legal right to even ask a person's name until they've filled out an application and signed it. Mm. Really? I can't ask anything of a welfare recipient by law until that happens. Mm. So whoever is going to these facilities, we have no knowledge of unless they come through us. One of the reasons we do that um, and have people fill these, these welfare applications out, and in some cases we do send them to Massachusetts, simply because the services there match better their needs <coughs> than yeah. the services here. Yeah. We try to take a look at the overall um, problems that individuals have. After all, our goal is to take them off the assistance program, to stabilize them, put them in housing, mm -hmm. and get them a job. And, and have them be protective in society. Mm -hmm. We don't know who they are. We can't do that. And that's one of the problems we have. Uh, another problem that we have is that, uh, and we inquired to the police department, um, on five different occasions um, up through 2012, and I you know you weren't there then. Um, well, I've been there 10 years. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Up through 2000, from 2011 through 2012, on five different occasions, our police department has taken people to crossroads and been refused admission. That's a problem for us. Uh, if we send a police cruiser to all the way to Portsmouth to try to f put a person in, in protective housing, um, the only other option we have is to release them because we, if they're not a minor, they're responsible for themselves. Um, but I thought the flip well, side was you said that they couldn't refuse anybody. But they have been. And how that's, about... That's one of the problems. And another problem I have is the state law in New Hampshire says we can't refuse assistance to people, right? The we towns? can't, but they can refuse to accept it. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, you know, when at, at 2 o'clock in the morning when someone comes in uh, to the police station mm. and says, I, 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 don't, I don't have any place to stay. I'm cold. Uh, I don't have anything to eat. Um, here's one at 3.26 a.m., there's another at 10.37 p.m., 1.16 a.m., um, 7.50 p.m. on a weekend, mm -hmm. 1, 1 1.10 a.m. in the morning, mm -hmm. and we take them to Crossroads and they're refused. Mm -hmm. We can't put them there. Well, I thought you said they couldn't be refused. They're not supposed to be. Oh. But, but they only have they X are. number of beds if the beds uh, are filled. Well, even if you have to put them in a chair, well, we, yeah. which is what we would do if we had them here, we'd have to put them in a chair and keep them warm, give yeah. them something to eat, make sure their needs are taken care of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that's exactly what we would do as well. I can't speak to those incidences. I don't know anything about why they were brought to Crossroads House. If, I mean, there are there's a small segment of the population that we're not allowed to sh um, uh, provide shelter yes. to if they have a history with us that's dangerous, if they're an arsonist, if they're a sex yep. offender. Yeah. So there's a small population, so I can't speak to the people that he's referring to. But I can tell you that we try very hard for those calls in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day, when the police from any community show up at our doorstep, yep. and we do bring them inside, we do put them in chairs in the lobby when all our beds are full, we do put people on the floor on mattresses when there's overflow. So our capacity is, is our capacity. But I guess what I'm here tonight to tell you is while we can't always meet the need of every person because we only have so much capacity and we do have some safety rules, Nothing about that has changed with this new coordinated access program. And I, I totally um, will, will acknowledge the frustration of not knowing where people come from and validating the addresses. That is also not a new issue. It's one we acknowledge. If someone comes into our shelter and says, this is where I'm from, whether they have ID or not, it's all we have to go on. Last year, 51% of the people we served had a mental illness. Oh, yeah. We have people with physical illness, mental illness. We do the best we can for the people with the information that they give us. And once they declare where they're from, that's all we have to go on. I would like to add, too, that I can also 
appreciate that a welfare office wants to know who's from their town seeking service and one of the things the great feedback we've got from all the welfare officers participating in this program is they're saying the same thing we want to know if you're sheltering someone from our town mm -hmm. so one of the things that came out of is rolling this out is we're communicating back from this coordinated access to tell the towns you know what John Doe just called they're seeking shelter we're placing them at Crossroads House and we have always said when people come to Crossroads House, you need to go to your welfare office. You need to fill out that paperwork, as he was mentioning. Mm -hmm. So we've always encouraged people to do that. Do people always follow through on that? Not necessarily. You've got a homeless family with three kids, no transportation and no money, getting down here where public transportation doesn't bring them to fill out a 20-page application doesn't always happen. Yeah. We okay. are happy to partner together to try to make this work and get the information that the town needs. Okay, Fred, did you have anything else here? Just that it's our responsibility to get that information and we're not getting it. And that's, that's a problem for us uh, wow. because we are legally responsible for any resident from the town of Hampton, mm -hmm. goes, regardless of where they go to, what assistance location they go to. Yeah. We, and, and I'm saying the town, uh, and the town government is legally responsible for their placement and for their care and protection. Yeah. And we're not getting that information, and that's, that's really troubling to us. So. Well, I got another qu That leads to another question. If they decide to start building the towns for people staying there, how will we know that they're from Hampton? Then, then we wouldn't pay the bill until we could verify they were from Hampton. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, I, don't, I nice can't there. pay a bill under the law unless it's, yeah. unless it's for a specific purpose contained within the appropriation. Yeah. If it was, in fact, for a person at Crossroads, yeah. and they were billing us, let's say, $10 a night for a nice even figure, okay? Yeah. And uh, we were not allowed to take an application from them and have them sign that application. I can't even ask them where they live. Mm -hmm. I have no legal right to do that. In fact, okay. I'm violating rights. So okay. Um, that's the problem. Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion? I'll move that we reinsert the crossroads line. I don't remember the amount. I can, into, I can, I can fill that in. Into the Health and Human Services article. So you're saying reinsert $15,000 into Article Correct. 20 um, into the consolidated article for crossroads. That would bring the total amount of that article from 140651 to 155,651. Correct. Uh, I will second that for the purpose of a asking another question. Uh-oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Succinctly. If we do this and we find that during this next year that things aren't going the way we think they should, right. we should leave open the option of withholding, withdrawing the funds next year. Well, you, you always have that option, Michael, but let, right. you're not dealing with... Well, not really, not with our historical tradition. Our tradition is the only time we change any of that is yeah. when somebody comes in and asks for mo more money and they have right. to get a warrant right. for that. I realize there, that. And but there isn't any record of us pulling the funds unless it was, what was the community action when they did had a number with the fuel a few years ago. Oh, yes, yes, That yes. was about the only one that I know of. Yeah. Okay, but we can also apply to be a non-participating community. There are several in the state to do as much as we do with a part-time, almost full-time welfare director, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're not subject to the statute at all. They're exempted. Okay. Oh. And unless um, there's any further discussion or unless you wish to propose a formal amendment, I'd like to uh, take this to a vote. Further discussion, Mary Louise? Okay. Um, any further discussion? Are you looking to amend it? You made some comments there. Okay. All in favor of restoring the 15,000 to Crossroads? All opposed? Unanimous. Great. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate okay. it. You were very convincing. Well, thank you. And I'll just give you my word that we'll do our best to work with the welfare office and get all the information yep. that they need. Okay. Thanks. And, and this is nothing new, by the way. Right. Chief Sullivan, I mean, I go way back with the police oh, department, and I can remember back in the 70s when officers were oh, carting oh, people oh, around to Concord oh, in the middle of the night. How about that, Jamie? I'll, I'll do Trying to find places for them. <laughs> yeah. the so it, this is not new. It's been exacerbated right. in recent days, right. but it is not a new situation. Okay. Um, announcements and community calendar. Mike? No, I have nothing. Thank you. So, Mike? So, Mary Louise? Um, I'm still seeing growly faces from <laughs> residents of neighborhoods where their waste wasn't picked up uh, after the, as an aftermath of the storm. And all I can say 
to you, but I, I do want to bring it up because there are there is a limit to resources, and when you have a big storm like we had New Year's week, uh, the top priority is public safety and getting those roads plowed. And there are only X amount, uh, X number of bodies to do it, and when there's plowing through the night for 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours steady, you, you, you just, you know, try to find a little space in your heart for not being quite so cross. Uh, trash is trash, and it will still be there, unfortunately. And while I feel badly, and we would all like to have things work like clockwork, uh, please be understanding that we have to deal with public safety first, and there's only so much public works can do. Okay. I have nothing. I Second appointment. That Second appointment, Diana Martin, Director of Parks and Recreation Department, Parks and Recreation Warrant Article, the Eaton Light... Um, light replacement. Um, just a little bit of background on this. We have a um, yeah, we warrant article um, in here. Fred, do you know the number off the top of your head? Uh, 36 strikes me, but I think that may be wrong. Yeah, no, yeah. Not, I don't think it's that yeah. high. Diana, do you know the number of the uh, warrant article off here? No, I haven't gotten it yet. I haven't used huh? I haven't gotten it yet. I don't know the number. Okay. <coughs> Ah, Article 22. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mary Louise. At any rate, where um, the selectmen had expressed concern relative to it's a $90,000 warrant article, the vast majority, you correct me if I'm saying anything wrong, saying our 80000 85000 is related to replacement of the lights um, at the Eaton Park, um, which I believe is predominantly a softball um, field. Mm -hmm. Whatever we've raised a number of issues, asked Diana, asked Fred to ask Diana to watch that um, video to try and respond to some of those. And so, what I'd like to do at this point is Diana say whatever yeah. you wish to say, and then we'll open up for questions and try and make a decision on where we go in that. Yep. Yeah. We all got the packets. Right. Yeah, and actually, I have another piece to give you that I got oh. today. Ooh. Um, the warrant article actually was to purchase three signs, one for Tuck Field, one for Eaton Park, and one for the Kids' Kingdom Playground, because yeah. all three of those signs have either been vandalized or weather-worn, mm -hmm. and they're either not standing there anymore or they're an embarrassment mm -hmm. to the town at this point. They don't look good. Um, the other part of the warrant article was to p replace at least half of the lights this year and half next year through the Special Revenue Fund, mm -hmm. the 20% mm -hmm. Revenue Fund. So that's what I had intended to do is do half of the project because the project's going to be 85,000, uh, 80 to 80,000 for the entire thing. And um, we also, I think, will probably have to get the new um, uh, converted box or whatever for the electri electricity as well. Diana, can, can I stop you there just to mm -hmm. clarify some of the money? We've got a, a total amount of 90 thousand uh, dollars. How, how much of that uh, this year is lights? The sign is about almost is ninety five hundred dollars for this. Okay, and how much is the fencing? There's no, I don't have a quote for fencing. What's that? I don't have a quote for fencing. I asked for a quote for fencing. I haven't received it yet. What so I was hoping to do for fencing, if we got it, was just the right field fence at Eaton Park. Yeah, this, so okay. that's off. And and. So at any rate, roughly eighty thousand dollars then was for the lights. Now you said something about half this year and no, half no, no. next so year. So I would only pay half of that out of that warrant article. It's eighty thousand to do the entire park mm -hmm. lights. I was going to do half of the park. Uh, I'm lost. Yeah. You, you've got Which ninety thousand. Forty thousand. What's that? Forty or fifty thousand, as many lights as I could get out of that. Ten Why does the article say ninety thousand? Ninety thousand. Ten thousand of that. So 10, you're not 000? asking for 90000 I am asking. That. I am asking for that. What I was asking for is 10000 of it, 90000 Yeah. For, for the, signs. the signs. I understand that. Then if I was to get some fencing, I don't have the quote for that, but that's not a huge figure. But I was hoping to do at least half of the lights with the rest of the money. So it's going to cost 80000 bucks for half the lights? No. Well, then why are we talking? If you're only going to do half the lights, it sounds like you're looking to spend thirty or 40000 on fencing. Unless I'm confused, that's the way it sounds to Let's me. Skip the light, <coughs> skip the fencing part of it because I don't have the quote. I wanted to do as much of the project as I could with whatever money was left over and then finish the project next year. So you're looking for $10,000 for signs and $40,000 for lights? At least 40000 
forget the fence for now. We I mean, forget the fence for now. We'll do that on a different project. It. Well, but, they never go to the estimate. But but well, it's it's but done. basically, if if let's just assume the article drops down to fifty thousand yes. based on what was said, yeah. we we've essentially still made a commitment to a even if it's only two years a a eighty thousand or eighty five thousand dollar investment in the, in the lights there. Okay, I, I think I get that. Sorry. And if she's going to do the fence and the other half of the lights next year, then that's going to be. A different warrant on it. Okay. More Correct. Money well, sorry, I just needed to. Yeah, but I was hoping to get as many, as much as possible done as I could this year. That's why I left that money in there. You know, if I could get three quarters of the lights done, it's going to be a smaller figure next year. That's that's what the difference is in the fifty thousand and the eighty thousand. That's all. Um. So the signs are about ten thousand, and then um, what I wanted to tell you about the lights why they need to be done is that they're they're approximately 40 years old maybe older than that they're a problem every year this year um, we started the season three weeks late mentally three weeks late because the, the lights didn't go on at all this year um, and we've had a couple incidences with the little warriors that were out there where the lights would just they'd be on and then they'd be off the lights are you know it's a liability to the town to have a light go off and then there's people out there in the softball field and they can't see the ball coming at them. Or the football players out there in the dark. Those are kids. Those are children. Be out there in so the dark. What's that? Why are they out there in the dark? Summertime, the sun sets around 9 o'clock. Why are people still out there in the dark? This is in the fall. The football players are out there in the fall. Oh, the uh, little tiny yeah. little kids? Yeah. Yes. And the men's league are out there. They have a fall softball program. Wow. And they play till like 10 o'clock at night. And where do all these people? Where do all these people come from? L why, don't you, why don't we let her finish <laughs> okay. her thing before? There's, there's about four leagues in town that are the primary users of the lights at Eaton Park. That's the Hampton Men's Softball League, the Little Warriors Football League, um, the Cal Ripken Baseball League for the kids also uses it, and the Hampton Co-Rex Softball League uses it. So we have approximately 350 softball players that use it. We have 136 Little Warriors players and 18 coaches that use it, and we have... I can't even tell you how many Cal Ripken baseball players use it. Um, both the Cobrex softball and the men's league softball are ASA sanctioned leagues and ASA has a lighting spec that they like to use for their leagues which we are not cur currently um, having for our leagues. So that's another thing that's a problem. Um, the lights are on for approximately 28 weeks out of the year, so it's a little more than half of the year the lights are on. Mm. They're on four days a week for most of those weeks, and then there are f um, five nights on the other weeks. Mm. Their uses is approximately three hours a night during the summer months and five hours a night in the spring, fall, and winter months. Wow. So there, there's about 400 hours of use. So, so it's going to like 11 o'clock at night or whatever? Mm. Yep. Wow. I didn't realize they went that late. Yep. Um, they lost, like I said, the men's league lost about 36 games, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but it was a real problem to try and reschedule those games that they had already played for because those fields are booked solid uh, yeah. before the next league started up. Um, I told you the Little Warriors found themselves in the dark. That was not good. And um, I feel like the light system is a benefit because it's a green system that conserves energy and money. It doesn't spill light all over the park and into the neighbor's yards. Yeah. It expands the lamp life and it takes away the issues of liability due to random light loss during gameplay. And I also, what I just gave you, it's a, it's a, a lease to own purchase program that, that can get the project completed with smaller payments for a longer term. Um, and there's no penalty to paying it off first. So I don't know if there's a way to figure out if, how to get it through that municipal lease purchase program. I'm not sure if that's an issue for our state. Uh, the town manager I don't think that issue. that's an option this late in the game, particularly with notice you requirements. You've got to follow the same procedures as bonding. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, so I don't know if that's something. I, I, I don't think, yeah, I, I don't think that piece of it is. Yeah. Can we? Let, let me let her finish. Uh, that's basically it. I just okay, wanted questions. to tell you what that last okay. piece of paper is. Okay. Saying. How much money have you got in the fund? Because this is not, this is revenue from your portion of the, uh, of the parking, parking, lot. Of the parking, lot. parking lot fees. What's, what's in that right now? I honestly don't know the exact figure. Oh, 125000 
Okay, so if there, if that amount is there, forget the fence for now. I don't want to worry about fences. Yeah. You get the money for the signs. If you can do the whole confounded lighting thing all at once, be better. and it just be better. do it and get it over with, you'll still be deriving some revenue. <coughs> worry about the fence next year. If you can do the ten thousand and the eighty thousand, get the lights done, get the signs done, then I'll I'll go for it and move that we. Okay, let, let's let's get the the que other questions. I have a question. I don't quite understand. If you have an electrician, why you can't fix the lights? <laughs> Are you saying your electrician is incompetent or they're just that complex? I'm not saying that at all. I've had the electri Parsons Electric has been out there. I've got Unitil that comes out and both, you know, they do it gratis for us to come out. Parsons Electric does not have a bucket truck and can't get to the lights. Unitil comes out old. there and they've helped Sometimes us. Sometimes stuff gets old, Michael. And like old. I said, they're... Don't get me started, Brent. Right. Um, There's also a 25-year... There's a 25-year warranty on everything if we buy the entire thing. 10-year warranty if we just put new lights on the yeah. poles that we already have. But they won't meet the specs for ASA. Now, did we go out and get other companies to give us prices on this? I don't see three bids this approach is at all. We're not making a commitment to a company. We're right. using it as an estimate. And yeah. if approved, then we Money. would go down that road. Well, like the thing of it is, my problem with that is, uh, Mr. Chairman, is this seems kind of pricey to me because it sounds like a lot of those could be repaired and they could get somebody who could repair them. I don't know why that would be a big problem. If you pay somebody a decent pay salary or a, 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 a fee to repair them, there would be a guarantee with that. Therefore, it should be working. Repair what's there now, you mean? Yeah. We do that every year. But like I said, they were repaired at the beginning of the season. And they whoever still went out in the middle of the season. Okay, then uh, what I'm saying is there should be a guarantee with that repair work or not. I mean, I've been in the business long enough to dealing with customers. You don't walk away and leave it so it dies the next minute on anything that I know of. It's a different issue that comes up. Okay, I'll tell you, I hear what I'm, I'm totally against this because it's too much at the last minute. Okay, any other questions? Or? I, I have a couple, Diana, and okay. it's kind of on the track that um, Mike is on or whatever. Um, right now, I believe there are, are nine poles, am I correct? That house There's eight. Eight, this eight. Would okay. Make six. Eight poles that hi house lights. With this new $80,000 system, how many poles? Six. Do they, huh? Six. Okay. And Different quality of light, I hmm? mean. Different quality right. of light, I mean. No, no I, I, I understand it. The, 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 the question that I've got, concern that I've got, it's kind of along the lines that, that Mike asked. The $80,000, $85,000 solution is essentially replacing everything. In particular, including the sure. the the Stanchions creosote, yeah. you know, wooden poles yeah. or yeah, or, or whatever. Right. In addition to the more active mm -hmm. components and wiring or whatever. Mm -hmm. As I look at that, um, I don't have any experience directly in terms of coming up with a number, but I suspect that an alternative solution that involves carte blanche replacing all of the light fixtures and addressing the wiring mm -hmm. to maybe replacing it all to whatever extent was necessary would be a much less expensive solution. I couldn't put a number on it, but to essentially replace eight light fixtures and the wiring associated with that such that everything is, is potentially new or at least everything that there's a benefit mm -hmm. to being new is replaced, but continuing to take advantage of those eight poles which I looked at and don't look um, there's one that's a little bit out of plumb. Nothing looks structurally. No, we've replaced some of them over the years. The okay. Poles themselves, Nothing yep. looks structurally unsound at the moment. That sounds to me like, you know, um, I won't pick a number, but but way south of eighty-five or ninety thousand well, dollars. So it's in your packet. It's about a it's a twenty-five thousand dollar difference or something. Thirty thousand dollar difference. Okay, so repli so eight replace fixtures light. and wiring is sixty is fifty thousand dollars. Fifty five, I think, is what's in the packet that I gave you. But okay. the difference is the warranty that you have. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get the same yeah. warranty. They're going to replace lights with a twenty five year warranty. Kay. They're going to replace anything that breaks for twenty five years. And I'll tell you right now, in twenty five years, I'm not going to care. I'll be seventy two <laughs> years old. <laughs> that, that's basically about. And I honestly have no experience to know what one of these light fixtures cost. But I can tell you that that's something in the neighborhood of five thousand no. dollars a light fixture. Well, look, look, the darn things have been there for what twenty-five years, I, or, or, or more. I have no idea what they cost initially, but that expense has long since been amortized down to X couple of dollars a year, 
and instead of doing the stick your finger in the dike stuff, replace the dam system and get yeah, it over. I, I, I don't agree with that because we, I, I don't see that we've got... Um, well, the lights were originally put up by the person that owned the house that right. they're behind. Mm. And it, so he put them up the way he wanted to put them up. Mm. Right. Then the town bought the property and we kept it. But in the, over the, I don't know, last 20 years, they've made such great strides in lighting. Yep. Mm. that we found that the lighting that he has, they're not placed in the right spots. Mm. You know, there are dark spots in the field. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. We can't, this, this right here will solve that problem and it's going to just light up the field. Yeah. It's directional yeah. light. It's not going to light up the neighbor's yards, but it's going to light up the field where it needs to be lit so people are not going to get hit by balls or yeah. anything like that. And again, the problem with these lights, they just, they're so old that the wiring oh, is I, I'm not. I'm not challenging whether or not yeah. fixtures need to be replaced. I'm, no not, not. I'm not challenging that. What, what, what I'm just saying is, is in the back of my mind, I'm struggling a little bit that replacing eight fixtures and some wiring is, is $50,000. Whatever, we don't need to debate it. I'm, I'm just I saying. I think it'll end up being six this fixtures. This literally has no impact on the tax rate. The money is already there no. in her fund. I, I don't. I'm, I, the money is in her fund. That's what the fund was set up for. She's the public works director, and I have a motion on the table. I want a second. Let's vote it. I don't want to spend all night. I, I, I would comment to Mary Louise's yes. comment that it's not going to cost the taxpayer anything. Uh, Diane has one of the things we asked for, which she provided, was a, a fairly lengthy list of things that may come along, like, for example, a new bus for 60000 and whatever. There is certainly a list of, uh, there is certainly a lengthy list here of things that if some or most, not necessarily all are right. done, it will clearly outrun the ability of that fund, which introduced about $120,000 last year to keep up and will result in other requests that may not yeah. necessarily be able to be satisfied within the fund. But that's her problem. Well, can, I f can I finish, oh, Mary Louise? With a, okay. Um, so I don't necessarily agree that that you take a, a different approach just because it's not, it is taxpayer money because that 120000 yes, goes in there. It doesn't go to revenue. So yes. philosophical difference. Okay. We have... Um, we have a motion which is basically to what, Mary Louise, uh, approve the $90,000 article with the under... spend up to $90,000 out of her fund, which comes from 20% of the parking lot revenues, to do all of the lights on the field and the signs. Okay, so you're, you're advocating that we're going to remove C in the current language of the Warren article, which, well, actually a portion of C, Fence which is damaged, damaged fencing, fencing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Just Get, get rid of the fence, do the other stuff, get it over with. Okay. And I already seconded it. And what? I was already second. You seconded that? A while ago, yeah. Okay, You're a thank brave you. man. Thank you. Voting? Okay, all in favor? All opposed? Motion passes 3 2 to continue on with this article as, as amended. Okay. Um, with Pierce and Nichols opposed. Okay, thank you, Diane. Thanks. There's hope for you, Chief. There's hope. <laughs> huh? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, where are we here? Next Chief appointment, Chief oh. Sullivan and Deputy Chief Silver, Police Department. Sawyer. Departmental Sawyer. 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 Sorry. Sawyer. Sawyer. Departmental <laughs> updates <laughs> and you Penguin you Point. You make Diana the Public Sawyer. Works Director. Can we? It would be all right if we moved up uh, Mary Conroy from Special Olympics <laughs> first, so she could yeah. head out of here. Yeah. If that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> So, good evening. Uh, this is Mary Conroy. She's the president of Special Olympics New Hampshire. Here to talk about the Penguin yes. Plunge. Good. Take it away, Mary. If you can believe, we are coming to Hampton for the 15th annual Penguin good. Plunge. Isn't that amazing? There have been so many great things that have happened to our organization as a result of hosting the Penguin Plunge um, that I would like to say thank you for. We continue to strive to serve people with intellectual disabilities providing sports training and athletic competition. What we've learned over time is to be a good athlete, you need a lot of other things going mm -hmm. on in your life. So we have spent um, time working on the health of our athletes. We have spent time working on the training of our athletes. And we um, have worked on providing quality sporting events for our athletes. Fifteen years ago, our athletes didn't own Alpine equipment. They weren't training at mountains. They weren't wearing basketball uniforms. They weren't having the opportunity to travel uh, as a team. 
those things have changed through the penguin plunge. Um, six years ago, we introduced a concept of the high school plunge. Last year, we had half of the high schools in the state of New Hampshire participating. Isn't that amazing? Uh, additionally, through the high school plunge and through our relationship with the New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association, over one-third of the high schools are currently participating in unified basketball. A unified basketball team allows people with and without intellectual disabilities the opportunity to play on a team representing their high school to play for a championship. I will tell you, without the Penguin Plunge, none of this would have happened. So we are invading Hampton uh, the weekend of February 1st and 2nd. Um, I will tell you, um, the energy around the plunge, around the state is amazing. I'll tell you another fun fact. So I just saw at the end of the year uh, the 603 best things that happen in the state of New Hampshire. And the plunge was in the top 100. So that was kind of exciting, I thought, as well. Um, but I think Rich will talk to you about what we, what we would ask you guys to support or how we're going to... Uh, dual role as deputy chief, but I'm also the director of the plunge for how many years now? A lot. A lot of years. Yeah, a lot. Um, if you've never attended the event, the uh, normal way we restructure traffic is we shut down, we'd like to shut down Ocean Boulevard from H Street <laughs> north to D Street. And we reroute the traffic down mm -hmm. to the back side of Ashworth Ave. We run two way traffic on Ashworth Ave. Mm -hmm. That's primarily the support we're looking for from the board and, and approval to uh, reroute the traffic. Mm -hmm. um, the same time that we're going to shut down Ocean Boulevard, which is the state DOT permit, which we're filing. Uh, we would do that from 9 o'clock in the morning and we'd ask for that uh, to be permitted out to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, both Saturday, February 1st, and Sunday, uh, February 2nd. Uh, we've been very consistent in our operations. We're usually out of the roadway by 2, 2.30 both days, uh, and traffic opens up to normal traffic. We also have provisions that if we have a snow emergency during that time period, that we keep the road open, and we just use safety corridors, and we use traffic officers to get people across the street if we continue the event during the snow emergency. Okay, questions? I will so move that we authorize those dates for the penguin plunge. Do you have a fallback date? Because you just mentioned snow. Nope. But we we <laughs> do not. Blizzard or whatever? We go in the snow. You go uh, anytime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I have. Um, <laughs> and have you considered the extra benefit because you're getting a lot of the public clean by doing the plunge? So you're promoting healthfulness and cleanliness. Is that all part Always of the Always a new take on things, Mary Louise. Is that all part of the motion? Yeah. Do we have a uh, <laughs> we have a second. I'll item. second all that rubbish. Any, um, <laughs> any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sounds like a great deal. It really it is. is. Sounds Thank great. You. Thank okay. You. Chief Sullivan and Deputy Sawyer, departmental update. Well, again, good evening. Um, <coughs> I thought I'd take the opportunity tonight to just do the year in review as opposed to, yeah. you know, the current month we're at. So some of this may be redundant if you've gone through the, the town report already, but uh, generally here's our, our overview. In May, um, Sergeant Joe Galvin retired after 29 years of service with the department. Um, I'm pleased to say that Joe is another, again, a retired sergeant who decides to stay on part-time for us, which is great. Uh, bringing his experience with us, both you know his, his time as a sergeant and prosecutor, as well as his uh, expertise in the Mounted Patrol, which we find very helpful to us. Um, and uh, with him leaving the prosecutor's office, uh, Sergeant Barry Newcomb was assigned mm -hmm. to that role, and uh, he's uh, been serving in that since May, uh, after being trained all summer by Sergeant Galvin, uh, and he's doing very well in there. Uh, in June, uh, Officer <coughs> Jimmy DeLuca was a part-time officer with us, and some of you may know him from his, you know, 34 mm -hmm. or 5 years or so as the number two person at the uh, lifeguards. Retired as a teacher, came on with us part-time, and uh, was hired as the newest full-time officer. Uh, Jim recently completed the academy, wow. um, doing exceptionally well. Uh, was chosen by both the staff and by his fellow cadets as the, uh, you know, essentially as the honor person of both, okay. and, and gave a uh, very um, eloquent and impassioned class expression. Uh, there's always one person selected from each class to, to give the class's expression mm -hmm. to the, you know, hundreds of people that come to attend. Um, and Jim, I'll say, in all the years I've been going, it was the best speech I ever heard. Not that I'm partial to Hampton alone, but I mean, he's an incredible speaker. He's, he was uh, uh, very articulate, and he did a tremendous job. We're very proud of him. Uh, and in November, uh, Officer Scott Bates, who also served mm -hmm. several years as our street corporal, Scotty was promoted to sergeant. Uh, is in that role doing a tremendous job for us. 
Um, our part-time uh, ranks just continues to ebb and flow. Um, we had 11 uh, part-time officers were hired during 2013, bringing the working specials that summer to 35. Uh, since then, we've been up and down. We now have a group of 13, which includes our summer class from last year, plus um, our uh, group from this, this last hiring phase, which unfortunately only gave us five qualified candidates. So uh, I think it'll be a challenging year again. We know we're going to lose some others in this period of time, so you know, we'll see where we're at. We're going to evaluate based on you know budget and uh, demand what we can do for another summer class, mm -hmm. whether the academy can yeah. handle it, whether we can handle it. But we we'll certainly put the money in to deal with that. We'll see what the you know what happens with the budget process. Um, and again, we'll see 2014. We'll see. Uh, I'm not terribly confident we're going to crest over into positive numbers this time around, but we'll see what happens. Our overall activities for the year um, during the same period um, is our calls for service were down, our arrests were down, our DWIs were down. Drug offenses remain the same. The number of incidents reported to us went up slightly. Um, <coughs> the number of offenses that those reports were down, however. Felonies were up 8%. Uh, accidents were up. Motor vehicle stops and parking ticket and income were both down. Uh, so overall, you know, it sounds like our stats are down for the year, except in some really critical areas. And I'll transition into that as you, you remember we talked before about how busy our fall was uh, with the number of significant critical yeah. incidents. Yeah. Again, we'll highlight those. We have highlighted those in our annual report. Really, that's an overview. Be happy to answer any questions you folks have. Okay. Questions for uh, Jamie or Rich? I do. Is staffing affecting your statistics because of a, a problem with an overall response. I understand you're knocking yourselves out yeah. to respond to incidents that so are reported, but what is staffing playing? Yeah, I think that clearly the lower numbers will have an impact on those officer generated activities. Mm -hmm. um, those really are more of the things where we'll get feedback on quality of life concerns. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're keeping up with, although we're pressing our calls for service, our needs, mm -hmm. right? But yes, those extra things definitely go down a little. Take, for example, you, you made a request to me about putting somebody out into the, you know, the fields to kind of check and see who's out on the, you know, the, the, the uh, areas out, uh, recreation areas. We just don't have the staff to do that right mm -hmm. now. So there'll be a somewhat down on that area. Okay. I think the other thing that we can never get around is the weather. Yeah. Um, if you go back historically to the summer of 2012, yeah. 2012 was one of the best summers that we've had in Hampton Beach in many years. The, the, the sun ratio was incredible. Mm -hmm. Whereas when we came to 2013, as you remember, June was pretty wet and cold, mm -hmm. and it really didn't clear up until after the 4th of July. You know, we had an exceptional August mm -hmm. and going into the fall, yeah. but that's going to affect the overall numbers because the crowds were down in those time periods. Yeah. Add on top the number of new officers we have where we're really training them and getting them up to speed. Mm -hmm. I think those are also major factors as to why you see some of our rates down compared to that's a really labor intensive bringing the new people on because you have to have partners you have to have full time Absolutely. officers partnering puts a lot of strain on our training, training drug partner. activity at the beach increasing about the same where where are we Go ahead. the drug activity shows to be roughly the same but obviously a lot of times when you see some of the cases get highlighted now, you remember a couple of years ago, we had a major case that we involved our federal and state mm -hmm. partners with, and we had a, a major drug raid, mm -hmm. and we took down a, a significant group of people from a, uh, a known gang. Mm -hmm. Now, that got a lot of headlines. This year, we're seeing things that are attributed to things like the accidents uh, that we've mm -hmm. had oh, yeah. and some of the other experiences, so they're gaining some headlines, but the rate appears to be the same. The heroin issues uh, in this region are significant. We've been experiencing them for years. Mm. You go to our neighboring communities, they're all seeing it. Yeah. They're okay. all seeing it. You see, it's very common across any beach area, but in the seacoast area, any communities deal with right. it. We see a lot of that, and we kind of extrapolate off of the number of overdoses we'll go to mm -hmm. or overdoses that result in, in untimely deaths, that type of thing. So yeah. it certainly mm -hmm. is still a large concern and something we still need to focus and deal with. Thank you for what you do. We really appreciate Thank you. you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. And Jamie, I assume some yep. combination of you and Rich are going to hang around we'll for both the stick around. parade Absolutely. and public yep. gathering license discussion. Oh. Okay. Okay. Next appointment, Mike St. Laurent. <coughs> appointment is associated with two parade and public gathering licenses requested for 
One, a race, the half at Hamptons, um, half marathon in February, and the other, the Smutty Nose Rock Fest half marathon in October. Um, Mike, I'd like to take these one at a time. Sure. Um, so we'll, we'll basically, you know, say what, what, what you want to say. We'll ask questions, whatever. We'll work through that first request and then move on to the second one, the October Great. one after that. Thank you for seeing us again. I realize you have a busy um, schedule tonight, so uh, I know we've already discussed a lot of this uh, in a previous meeting. Um, the Half of the Hamptons is a race that's gone on for uh, this is the seventh annual year. It's a half marathon. Uh, the proposal is for uh, 1,200 runners. Um, what we've done is uh, due to um, a request by the town basically to have less of an inconvenience for races such as this, we've changed the course so it has uh, more of a course on major roads and less on tertiary roads or smaller roads. Um, basically the course starts and goes around Ocean Boulevard to Ashworth and does a little loop around there and heads all the way out to High Street up to Mace and Mill and Barber through Woodland, Great Gate, Juniper and Huckleberry and then back again. Um, there are no closed roads. Um, we anticipate that um, except for the very beginning of the race, people that need to drive on the roads will not have any issues. Um, since this, this is a race in its seventh year, we actually cut down the number of runners we have. We've had up to, upwards of 1,400 runners and not had any complaints for this particular race. Um, the nice thing about this race is that it does bring some business to the beach community and we also fill up uh, four pantries with all the food that they need um, at a critical time of the year where they don't get a lot of food in the February. February. Uh, any other questions? Any questions uh, Jamie, would you like to make any sort of comment? Sure, I think uh, from our point of view, uh, just in a general overview with both of the races before you today, we'll say that um, we feel pretty comfortable that we can provide public safety for these. I've seen the route changes. Um, this one, uh, there is, I'm a little concerned with how it cuts through Fellows Ave and that, that smaller area down there, but it's certainly something we can manage. I've talked to Mike about that with the concerns of Harbor Road as a private road. They've addressed that, as I understand it, with the owners of that section. So it's certainly something we can do. The reason that we put them before you, as you recall, one of the last times I was in here in these with the discussions is balancing the community's need for you know the inconvenience of the races versus you know doing them. I, I'll assure you we can you know I'll, I'll speak up if we have any concerns to deal with them public safety wise. I don't have those with these. Certainly we'll refine our plans that we've already done. This organization is outstanding in their planning. They do a very good job working with our folks. Uh, Mike and his crew are very good with that. So I don't have any concerns with planning of a safety issue. Really is for you folks the balance of is this race too much of an inconvenience on the community and the feedback you received. So we left that up to you folks and then yep. we can but, but I can assure you we'll be able to plan with them uh, we feel safely. I may quibble about whether a road's closed or not or the impact on it a little bit, but I still think that this race will be fine uh, and safe from our point of view, as long as you're good with the community impact portion. Okay, any questions for Jamie or Mike? I'll just make a comment and then I'll ask a question. I think that we ought to change this map so it goes right in front of Mary Louise's house. Okay. And have it for the duration of right the up race. the driveway too, through the backyard. <laughs> Any other questions? No, the only other comment I have, I think you come up and work real hard to make it work, and I think it's a wonderful idea. And if I think most people don't mind being inconvenienced for a period of time as long as they know roughly when it's going to begin and end and advance. And I think that's one thing we have to really be concerned about, along with the safety aspect that the chief will take care of. Right. I, I have a real quick question. What, what about snow? I mean, if we have a blizzard like we had right after New Year's and we're trying to clear the roads and plow, what happens? Right. We rely totally on the, the police to tell us if it's not going to be a safe day. And we actually put in the application that uh, perhaps if there's a storm coming to do the race on a Saturday instead or to do it the next weekend. So it really is, uh, if it's, it, even if it's two or three inches of snow and slippery out there, I'm just as concerned about the runners as mm -hmm. I am as mm -hmm. the police that have to stand yeah. in the street with yeah. cars going by that's getting so um, yeah no it's, it's our concern is absolutely the runners and, and we've communicated as I recall in the past with you know as a storm is impend coming in we're looking yeah. at it and we make the call saying you know we're yeah. concerned I think that happened to us once before as I recall. Yeah we canceled last yeah. year yeah. Yeah. and we didn't yeah. have a makeup date so it yeah. was over. So the, the concern I often have is, is some of those February races we have snow banks that are you yeah. know yeah. extremely high. Yeah. We haven't had that in a little bit but that's always a concern of the February race for me. Yeah. 
Uh, so again, the communication is open with them. Their website is is good. So when we make the call, they notify the runners and everybody. everybody so I don't want public works trying to plow with a whole bunch of runners. No, we we wouldn't do that. We would notify them that it's unsafe and okay. would shut it down. Yeah. Okay. Would somebody like to make a motion? Um, I make a motion to approve their both their plans. I think they're both wonderful. We're doing one. Right okay. Now. So we're doing one at a time. Okay, I'll, I'll make so a motion, motion to approve the to first approve plan. Plan. The motion, Mike, is to then approve the parade and public gathering license yeah. for the um, February 23rd, 2014 road race known as the um, Half at Hamptons, Half Marathon. Half we have a second for that. Seconded by Mike Clough. Any further discussion? All in favor? No all abstain. I'm, I'm all opposed? I'm Abstain. abstain. I'm gonna Mary abstain. Louise, you abstain? Yes, sir. Motion passes 401 with Mary Louise Woolsey, Slutman Woolsey, abstaining. Okay, let's move on to the Smutty Nose Rock Fest half marathon, Mike. Okay, the, the Smutty Nose Rock Fest for this year, we're proposing a half marathon. In previous years, it's been a half marathon and a full marathon. The date is October 5th. Um, start time is 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, with only having a half marathon, the end of the race is actually at 11.30, whereas in the past it's been as late as 2 o'clock, 2.30. Uh, the runners, last year we had 5,000 runners. We're asking for an application of 5,500 runners. It, it does not affect the road closure times, which I'll go into. The distance of a half marathon is 13.1 miles. Uh, the objective this year was to have a, a quality race. Um, that has a much significant lower impact on the town. Um, with that in mind, uh, last year in 2013, there were 16 miles in the course for the half and the full. This year, it's 10 miles total, a reduction of 38%. Time period, I went over six and a half hours down to about three and a quarter hours. Uh, the town area there really was affected. About 33% of the town's area was affected. It was mostly because we had the roads of High Street, and Winnicunit kind of handicapped that whole time, um, which created, I thought, a lot of the issues. And uh, so we have a much significantly lower impact, and I'll go over the course in a second, the amount of affected residents from about 6,000 down to 2,000. Um, basically, the neighborhood miles was the largest thing we tried to improve upon. We went from 13 neighborhood miles down to three neighborhood miles. Um, you know, significant reduction on that. So the course itself starts uh, down at the beach right in front of the casino, does a loop around the Asherith and Ocean Boulevard, goes out, uh, goes to, there we go, goes up to uh, High Street, cuts off uh, over on Little River Road to Woodland, and then we're basically out of your hair by about mile <laughs> six, which I we head into uh, Northampton. <laughs> <laughs> Once we're in Northampton, we cut over to Atlantic Ave, and we come back on the left-hand side, on the ocean side, all the way back to the uh, finish, which is uh, right by C Street. Um, the, the closed roads, um, the goal of the race is to provide a, the least amount of inconvenience, and so you know, what we do is we send a postcard out that goes out to 5,000 residents from everybody east of Route 1. And um, basically, we also do the message boards, which we thank you. We're happy to, to pay, defray the cost of those to the town. We put it on your town website. We put it on the TV. And we also do the signs one week before identifying the time that will be coming through the neighborhoods. Um, the key thing in this year, you know, we're, we're really going to work very hard to make it so that you have the, the least amount of issues that we had last year by doing all these things together. OK, questions? One, one question. I noticed that this one goes into the um, Northampton on Atlantic Ave. You coordinated with those folks. Okay. That's all I have. Um, I have a couple. If nobody else has any, um, it appeared to me, Mike, that all of the reduction in inconvenience looks like the half marathon route is identical to last year, and that all of the reduction in inconvenience is a function of the fact that there isn't a full marathon. Is that accurate? No. Okay. We used to cut up Winnicunit and go through Presidential and Alexander. Mm. Right. Yeah. And so what happens is once you've got one group going up, the faster group and the slower group hasn't caught up and we come back again, mm -hmm. it ties the people up between those two areas. Right. 
Um, I believe now, once we go all the way up to High Street, really there's just going to be the people on the right-hand side of the High Street that will be most inconvenienced, and Little River and Woodland. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so, you know, there's a whole area between Winnicott and High Street that was inconvenient. So people, that, people yeah. were stuck, basically between those two areas. Now actually as we go up on High Street, we believe we're going to be able to control our runners and have to keep them in the right-hand lane and if someone needs to get out on the um, south side of High Street with a race marshal or an officer to help, we should be able to get them to get out to go slowly. Um, so it's, I think it's a significant difference. What, 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 where I'm just still a little confused is I was going by the maps, okay, yeah. and there are two maps wh which have both, you know, the, the map as well as a listing of the streets and whatever. Yeah. One says 2014 affected areas, the other says 2013 affected areas, and I can't see a difference between either the map or the listing of streets. Okay. And you have all the little side streets in there. Yeah, I have a copy of that. I'm not sure if you have that. Uh, basically, the the course last year went up to went up Winnicunit and cut over Presidential to Alexander, and then cut across. Uh, we went up a little road of the Taylor, Taylor to Street. Little River. Yes. Okay. And then down Woodland, yep. and then the same way out. So everybody in between High Street and Winnicunit had an issue. Okay. There, there's I a lot of people. Uh, I don't want to beat this to death, but I would. The it doesn't show the side streets, Richard. Right. The yeah. side streets, yeah. Yeah, I just see it. We had in a pack of 2014 yeah. affected yeah. areas. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. we've got this back map and this list. Yeah. yeah. And then we have 2013. It's the same map. And it, it yeah. doesn't say when it comes. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah. It's almost like somebody. I'm sorry. Yeah, somebody copied the wrong one. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's what so it's so in fact that could be confusing. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, so I provided fact, another, the, another um, page, and it was the it was course structured. race. They look has similar. changed and improved it. Then. Yeah. Yeah. They look they, they look identical. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they, they, they yeah, it looks sorry. like somebody on the wrong map. They okay. copied the wrong file, and that that's, what, that's what he gets paid for to find that. So. Do I get a bonus? <laughs> okay. So uh, any I, further? Uh, yes, I have a quick question. Questions. Um, Little River. Just the part you're standing on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that says 8:30 tonight. I, I can I can dig the starting time. I get that. Right. So I'm not going to get excited about 8:30. But 8:30 to 9:50 a.m. I don't believe it, to be perfectly frank with you. And you're going to still have people running up there. Although, thank God, they're not going to be weaving in and out of Taylor Street and going crossways and whatever. Uh, so. Um, I don't know. I'd rather see. I'd rather see, and it's your thing. I'd rather see you do the start time, which you can approximate in neighborhoods, and then say two eleven thirty or two twelve noon or something, because you're probably going to have people. So you're, you're he usually judges that I think based on how fast he runs versus me. So <laughs> it definitely <laughs> will impact the difference based on some of the skill level you run us. It's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. And they, you know, it's hard for them. Well, to let's be realistic. I mean, they're yeah. not all going to be realistic. Be by my end, it's going to have an impact on the race. By Very. eight, whatever the heck, nine fifty or something. Eight. What I'm hearing is, is Mary the, Louise. You start time. seeing them in your neighborhood at eight thirty. Right. They will. You're correct. They will not all be right. through. However, when we do other races, I don't want to run over any of them. When <laughs> dude, I don't want you to run over anyone either. I'm I want you to go through that. that. We know that. Um, <laughs> ho however, once you get to the end of the race, it's it's entirely possible to get out of your driveway by just waiting until there's yeah, enough I, people that I, I know by. that. And, 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 Sometimes yeah. I don't like to wait at the end of my driveway, but what I'm saying is that if you've got all these people, it's a lot of people, and now you're talking 5,500 people again. You know, and so be realistic. If, if you're going to send me a postcard. And, and I'm going to read it. You know, expect you somebody in your neighborhood are you going to be away? Is that why you need a postcard? Until the race ends. Right. I, I, mean, I think what I'm hearing is Mary Louise yeah. requesting that air on the side of yeah. it taking a little longer. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, as opposed That's to shorter. That's a great suggestion. Whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. 10 or okay. Would anybody um, like to make a motion? Make you I'll make the motion. Yeah, right. And the motion is to approve the parade and public gathering license for the Spunny Nose Rock Fest Half Marathon on October 5th, 2014. That's correct. Right. I will Thank second you. that motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? We're going to abstain. Opposed? I'm still being won over. Motion passes 401 with Sletman Woolsey ah. abstaining. Um, Mike, 
One other issue, I think I saw it somewhere in your verbiage. Um, did you want to um, comment in terms of, um, of any update that you might be planning for the marathon in the future? Correct. Correct. Um, I'd, I'd love to update you on that. Basically, what we're trying to do is to create a marathon that has the least impact mm -hmm. on the town and has a lot more of the roads in your neighboring towns. And we've come up with a plan for that. And we're actually working first with Rye and then Northampton to see what they think about it. But the goal will be to have the race, uh, I'll give you the, the very briefest of details, about 800 people starts at 7 o'clock in the morning and we're out of town by about 8, 10 in the morning. Um, no, road, no, no road closures. Um, and basically it'll feel like a small 5K race, all major roads. No, no. Do, do you have roads. a, obviously you've got to work through three towns. We have to work through three towns. Do you have any sort of rough time frame in mind in, in terms of when this might take place? Uh, the race itself would be October 26. Okay, so you're, you're looking, yeah. you're we targeting have, have this year then. We would probably be coming back to you the end of February okay. to, to talk about it and do it. I, I, I think you'll find it the easiest one to look at. Okay. That can be a full marathon. A full marathon, right. Right, working, the business community is very, very interested in working with us yeah. on that. Oh, great. We believe we can fill up every hotel and restaurant, even with the 800-person race in a marathon in that time of the year and do a great weekend for the Beach District and, and the whole, actually for the town. Okay. Well, my only comment is I thank you very much for your responsiveness on to some of the concerns yeah. that have been expressed thank for you. the inconvenience. So. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Maybe getting me excited helped a little bit. Okay, with the board's um, <laughs> consent, I would like to, one of the warrant articles which uh. we need to discuss has to do with the High Street culvert. Uh, Deputy, uh, the uh. DPW director is yes. here. I'd like to slide that forward in the interest of Keith yep. getting out of here sooner rather than later. And that is, in fact, Article 16, I believe, that yes. we're talking about. Um, I believe everybody received a memo from Keith that describes um, what he's looking to do. And Keith? Sure. And I did uh, send a follow-up uh, email to you this afternoon with some updated information. Um, so basically, you've authorized me to submit a federal grant application for $430,000 to help subsidize the cost to decommission the Old Mill Pond Dam and replace the High Street culvert. The total estimated uh, project cost to do this work is $575,000 with a town share of $145,000. Basically, um, I had a meeting with some state officials that indicated that if we were to increase the scope of work for the project um, with the idea of uh, doing a uh, drainage study of the Meadow Pond area, that that would increase the likelihood of us getting this grant and they're willing to um, and they've actually already provided me with documentation and paperwork that indicated that they would account for $22,132 of in-kind services as the town's 25% uh, share and they're estimating the cost of this work to be about $60,000 we're still working on a scope of work for the project to detail exactly what it would be, but it would look at um, whereas Meadow Pond has a lot of issues with Phragmite control and so forth of looking at that, probably involving some um, high school kids as volunteers to help with this project. And uh, I just think it's a win-win situation, particularly if it increases the chances of us getting this um, a grant, which they feel it will greatly. There's, uh, they're estimating right now there's going to be 500 applications for this grant. And they do feel, looking at the scope of work, that mm -hmm. this is a, um, a, good, a good project, not just the study, but also the culvert work and the dam itself. So what I'm requesting is that the board authorizes me to increase the grant amount to $475,000, which equates to a total project cost of $635,000, with a town share of $137,868, and a state of New Hampshire contribution of in-kind services equating to $22,132. And if the board is agreeable to that, I would like to um, schedule a public hearing to authorize us to 
um, submit the grant on uh, January 27th. The grant is due, uh, we need to apply on January 31st, and uh, the state has been great with working with me to put this grant together, and they're providing a lot of assistance, uh, Fish and Game, um, the Dam Bureau, uh, the Coastal Management Zone people. So they're very excited about this uh, project and uh, are just being great with assisting me to put this, pull us all together. Um, I'd like to comment just a little bit of clarification on some of the numbers that Keith just threw out because it may be a little confusing. You combine some of the numbers between the two mm -hmm. Warren articles to get to that 600,000. In reality, we're not proposing to do anything to Article 15. All of the changes are in Article 16. Correct. Okay. <coughs> the okay. one that's a high street yep. color. Second yep. of all, the increase in the in Article 16, you correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, is from 175,000 to 235,000, none of which will add um, to the tax impact of that Warren article. The tax impact will still be 87500 simply because we're anticipating a 75% grant and the state of New Hampshire has agreed um, to essentially cover the cost through in-kind services um, of our 25% net. So ultimately, everything that he has just said, it's all in Article 16 yeah. and there is no um, tax impact in terms of what's being proposed. Actually, I think it's decreasing the tax impact slightly, ever so slightly, but if anything, yeah, right. 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 Uh, uh, and the other part of that is that we had um, estimated that it would be at least a 50% grant, but it's going to be, to be truthful with you, it's going to be 75% or nothing at this point okay. because the federal government did say they'd go with, a, and I notified you of, of a 100% grant, mm -hmm. but when I attended the webinar that we had, mm -hmm. they said very clearly that the people that can contribute the more money will get a, have a much better yeah. chance of getting the grant. So that's why we're going with the 75, 25%. So if, if you take what Keith just said, mm -hmm. The, the fiscal impact note, um, which reflects 87,500, yeah. we're actually taking a conservative approach. We've hedged it a little. In reality, what he's saying is it, it, it will be closer to 43 or 44,000, um, you know, based on the 75% the or, or nothing <coughs> um, in the grant. The other comment that I would make, I don't know if anybody was confused, but one of the things in Keith's memo that he put on Friday, it says he has attached a draft warrant article. There wasn't actually an attached draft, but that draft is yeah, right. Article 16 in the package that went I didn't out. include the draft? No. no I apologize. But, but it was <laughs> the, the updated <laughs> article. The long you, correct, <laughs> you correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but the, the <coughs> updated article is, is the article that's Article 16. One other point of confusion, it's on the top of page 10, for whatever reason, um, a little confusing it, the heading was at yeah. the bottom of page 9. Yeah. Um, won't be that way, obviously, when we're, we're done with this. But I think it's it's all good. Yeah. And um, do we have a consensus then to well, move forward well, with may the... Well, I, may I move, because I think we're going to have to do it anyway, that we recommend Article 16. We're going to go through all of the articles. I know, but... Can I'm not get this out of the way. Well, well, I, I would just as soon go through all of them sequentially at once so we don't meet anything. I think what we're just looking to do is approve the change um, to well, the Warren um, article. I'll also point. move that we approve the change that right. Keith has recommended that is now uh, incorporated into Article 60. Right. I'll second I, for the purpose of discussing okay. a question I'd like to ask when everybody gets done. Thank you. So when you, when you said it was 470, and 15. You didn't mean to say that. The addition will be in Article 16, yes. 16 rather than 15. You're not asking for $470,000 in 15. That's what no. you said. Okay, I want to make sure that's correct. Okay, so we're adding the money mm -hmm. to 16, as Richard said, rather than what you said. Okay, I'm all set with that. Okay, the next thing I'd like to say is if we do the pragmatic thing on Meadow Pond, I think one of the things we want to do in that study is determine what the problem is at when it kind of with the level of the water going out because that culvert combination there is too high for actually anybody. that will be part of the mm -hmm. work they did yeah. talk about that because they'd we like get to see more flushing action mm -hmm. in there yeah. we get all these complaints all the time about Kings Highway and everybody along there and if we can get that water out of there quicker mm -hmm. even if it does get high it'll get out quicker 
Absolutely. Okay, any Thank further you. discussion? No, great project, Keith. Great. All in favor? Unanimous. Thanks, Keith. Don't go away. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if uh, I could just say to you that one of the items that you're, <laughs> if, if you're al allowing the public works director to go after <laughs> this, and I don't blame him for wanting to, he's had a lot of late nights, um, I wanted to say that with regard to the solid waste ordinance amendments, oh, yes. um, the public works director and the town manager and I did meet with regard to what is currently listed in the warrant article as changes. And uh, other than some little um, <coughs> stylistic type changes that I'm going to be recommending when we go through each article, I, I wanted I, to say that the, the public works director is is okay with the uh, changes that are listed. Good. So I didn't know if you wanted, while he's here, to ask any questions about any one of those changes to get his input. I'm already doing it. I'm all set. I'm happy with it. Okay. Uh, it's well, it's it's was well, well worth spending the time on that. Do you want to talk about Um Don't encourage him. I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to be courteous. To be, to be honest with you, um, what I saw here, I looked at this today, Article 28, and it, it, it didn't look like a change very much from the last revision that we looked at, okay? Correct. And, and there were, um, quite frankly, I, I, I wasn't planning on, on um, beating this one up, but a lot of the concerns of, of detail in there in the ordinance that if you want to change it will require future changes from the legislative mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. body. Some of the, the information there in terms of right to inspect materials but not to open bags. I don't know how you inspect materials. It doesn't appear to have changed some of the constitutional concerns um, you know, that you had. Um, th those are my comments. It d does it make it a bad thing? No, um, but I, I, my, my sense is, is that we ran out of time on this one. Well, we covered a lot of ground on there, I thought. I do, you think, do you think I that think that's bad verbiage ground. there about uh, looking at the trash but not opening bags? Well, I don't in, think that's inspect a problem. Inspect is a, uh, a word that mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's how you do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's not looking. It's not opening bags, which is what mm -hmm. the constitutional yeah. holding of the court was addressing. Right. Yeah. Inspecting is yeah. is is uh, something that will be flushed out in practice. Yeah. And we're not going to be opening bags. We don't have to worry about the court decision then. We're not going to be opening bags. <laughs> I'm all happy with. It. Okay. All set. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you, Keith. We'll be back. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> Approval of minutes of December 30th. Okay, page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. I have a question on page five. Recession is the act of rescinding. Rescission. Yeah, you know, rescission is the act of rescinding. Yeah, but we're going to rescind it. We're not going to go through the act of doing it. We're going to do it. Mike, yeah. where, are, where are you on the page? Uh, at the very rescission. top, Rescission. Article number 33. Rescission is the act of rescinding. <coughs> Correct. And we want to rescind it, period. Take it away. Right? Yes. Mr. Philbean, it's your, your idea. <coughs> you want to kill it, right? Yes or no? There you go. But we don't we need a rescission. We just want rescind. We just want to rescind it. Well, period. That's all right, Mike. For what it's worth, the, the, the names that we're describing them here for purposes of identify them mm -hmm. are, are not necessarily in the uh, the warrant itself. Yeah. Okay. This is thirty-three. Eighteen or nineteen. Nineteen. <coughs> Vote right, to rescind by adoption. It's adoption, so it's it's not. It it, yeah, it's got the word rescind. Yeah. Not yeah. That, that's okay. just what yeah. we had put titles right. on them. Yeah. Just so Titles we knew what we were talking yeah, about, right. but those are not going to be contained on the warrant or the ballot, those okay. headings. Titles are gone. Yep. I'm happy with that. With that. Okay. But, but the, I don't, have, I don't care what we call it in the, in the minutes, but <coughs> right. it, it is not a correct statement, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Page From the six. English language. And my wife's not here to help me, so I know I'm right. I know. Page six. 
Page six, six line down in regards to pollution control change, it should say pollution control exemption mm. change. Yeah. Um, next paragraph down, um, seventh line down, um, Phil, I th see if you remember this. Um, you say provide services but get nothing in return. 10% um, of states' revenues come from Hampton. I think that was 10% of states' liquor revenues. Is that correct? That is correct. So, it, I mean, I looked at that. I said, oh, he didn't say 10% of revenues. And <laughs> I think it was, uh, would have been nice. It's, it's liquor, more like 3%. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. five so, that's, so insert the word <laughs> liquor in between states and revenues. Um, on page 7 of 7, um, I don't know if this is a typo or whatever, but if you look, there's there's two motions with with votes described as five zero zero, and um, it, it it looks like a repetition. I don't think that there were two motions, and it, it's there's different words. But one says Selectman Woolsey strongly suggests that Miss Lyons be direct to contact Arthur Moody. That's the dread lady. Right. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. The, the, I'm sorry. I was yeah. I was going too right. fast on Saturday. Yeah. These are distinct motions. Yeah. Yes. Forget that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'll second them. <coughs> All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. <coughs> Town manager's report, Fred. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, the budget committee will hold its public hearing on the town and school budgets and warrant articles on Tuesday, January 21st, 2014. 7 p.m. at the Hampton Academy cafeteria. Yep. It's important everybody be there. The last day for filing petition warrant articles is tomorrow. Tomorrow. January 14th, 2014 at 5 p.m. in the Selectman's office. It is requested that trash and recycling carts be removed from the street after collection of your trash or recycling to avoid damage to the carts by plowing, salting, and sanding in operations of other passing of motor vehicles. The deliberative session of town meeting will be Saturday, February 1st, 2014 at the Winnicott High School starting at 8.30 a.m. Mr. Chairman, there's a couple of other things. I had a, an opportunity this, this afternoon, actually late this morning, to meet with representatives from Aquarian. And they will be filing a 1.9% effective rate increase uh, for wicker charges that will be effective on April 1st, 2014 just so everybody knows what's going mm -hmm. on. Uh, that will be filed with the Public Utilities Commission, and that's the 2013 WICRA charges, not, not the 14. Those are yet to come. <coughs> and I have given the board um, a listing mm -hmm. of the items for 2014 that they're projecting, so uh, those will be coming later. Uh, the 27th, I believe, Keith, Keith addressed the public hearing for you earlier. I do have a very nice note from, from Mike, and, and thank you to the board and to the citizens of the community uh, expressing their condolences for his recent loss. Okay. Um, trash pickup. It's uh, been somewhat of a, uh, an issue lately, and um, Keith and I have had some long conversations about what we're going to do here. And um, we are completely abandoning the idea of trying to, to address trash collection and the, the, the trigger to cancel it <coughs> along with the trigger to cancel school. Mm -hmm. It doesn't right. make a lot of sense. Right. Uh, school Good. could be canceled because of one inch. It could be canceled <coughs> because of loss of power. Yeah. It could be, there's a whole number of issues yeah. that, that come right. and interrelate to that. Can I comment on that, Fred? Sir. I is it, it, it I was involved with, with some of these discussions. Uh, it's where I'm coming from. Is, is it fair to say, had we not had that linkage on Thursday of, of, of the preceding week, then we probably would not have had a major problem because we would have um, got a major portion of the trash collection done on Thursday? Not only fair, but accurate. Right. And so essentially what would have occurred <coughs> is instead of missing three days, yeah. Wednesday to the yeah. holiday and yeah. Thursday yeah. and Friday um, to the weather, we would have yeah. been out there on Thursday, and therefore there was was yeah. eight less hours or whatever that we would have one had day to make up. Yeah. To make up, yeah. so good move. <coughs> so we we we've discussed that. We'll we'll be going to come up with some some general ideas on how that how that tailors out. Um, certainly, we're going to tailor it to uh, 
the actual occurrence of bad weather. Good. Right. Um, certainly, if we have two inches of snow, we're going to be collecting. That's just the right. way it is. Good. If we have yeah. a foot of snow, we're not going to be. Good. Well, isn't it true, though, if you have the plows out, you can't have those trucks running around the same time? Not necessarily. It depends on how much snow there is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we have light, uh, two inches of light fluffy yeah. snow, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. more an operation of yeah. sweeping it off the street more than anything. So okay. we would actually be picking up trash on those particular days. That, that particular right. day, um, the trash collection is essentially <coughs> 6 in the morning till 2 in the yeah. afternoon. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That particular day did not crank up until like right. 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. So. It's so. going to be right. storm specific, Fred. It's right. going to be storm specific or incident specific. Yeah. And one of the things we like to ask people to do, so everybody knows what's going on, is to please sign up for the notifications. The forms are upstairs on the on the counter in front of the town clerk's office. And please come in and sign up. We'll give you voice for notification by phone. We'll give you email notifications. We're obviously going to place the material on the websites mm -hmm. uh, so that people can have a way of finding out. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. We'd like folks to know as soon as possible. We, mm -hmm. Your email address is important to us, your phone number. Fill these out. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can take your name off the list anytime you want or add it anytime you yep. want. So, but this will help if, yes. and solve if I can, the problem. It does work. If I can add to what, what Fred said, um, you can sign up for all three of these online right on the front page right. of the yeah. home page. It's over on the right side. Or just one. Huh? Or one, but I'm saying they're all. You don't have to come into town hall and fill out a form. You can, yep. if you've got internet access. The only time you really have to come in to sign up is if you don't have right. internet access right. and you're looking to have the voice um, capability. Yep. One thing, pa Paul and I, Paul Paquette, have a dialogue off and on on this, like how do we get people to sign up and whatever. And um, <laughs> you know, we talk about magic bullets and and the whole oh, bit. Yeah. And I think I'm remembering the nu number correctly, um, but. Paul sent me an email, and I think we were up to close to 400 on the email system, which did not exist several months ago. Right. And he said, problems with trash collection appear to be a magic bullet. To sign up. So that's made dramatic progress. Yeah. But the problem is, really I'm not going to mention which street, but a street in town I know very well, all the barrels were out on Thursday morning. Mm. That's been going on for a while where the holiday gets bumped. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, so, I mean, right. I don't know if you come down and wrote it on people's foreheads or not, if it worked. I well, think well, they're very knowledgeable what's going on. The yeah. problem is when is it canceled and why? Right. Yeah. Right. And that's the but thing that really yeah. confuses but everything. Doesn't everybody know we don't pick up trash on holidays? No, that's, that's not the case. Well, it's not just that, Mike. It's basically a case of the public works makes, let's talk about weather related as opposed to, to, yeah. to um, holidays, which is more dynamic. If, if public works makes a decision based on the weather forecast to, to not pick up trash mm -hmm. the next day and they make it at 8 o'clock on Wednesday night for Thursday, mm -hmm. then people are going to know at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock on Wednesday and not put their trash out. That's much less of an inconvenience to right. people than putting it out, than finding out they didn't yeah. pick it up and pulling it in and yeah. so yeah. on. So <coughs> it's, it's, okay. a, it's a problem. So we're going to solve that problem. Yeah. We're going to make sure that uh, people know what's going on and we're going to try to make this so it's convenient for folks. So you're going to call them also or contact them also then when there's just a holiday and there's really no big deal. It's just a holiday. Well, and we have that up on the website already. And you're going to call them for that too. Well, because they have to. I, they have to I, I, I believe um, I am on all three systems just for the purpose of, of knowing what's going on and, and whether or not it's working. Mm. I believe that they are. My recollection is that they are doing that in the holidays. Really? And yeah. It, it doesn't cost anything. Okay? I know. It's and a free recorded message. Quickly. So I, I believe they have been doing that, Mike. Okay. That's good. I'll the tell that to you. The other thing I have, Mr. More. Chairman, is that, and this was given yes. to me by Selectman Bean on behalf of yeah. the Morelli family. Uh, this is the 100-year uh, history of Morelli's Market in, in, in Hampton. The first hundred years, so I'm yeah. assuming that there will be a follow-up <laughs> edition for the second hundred years, <laughs> and it's been autographed by all the members of the family. That's right. uh, oh, that's uh, nice. It's going to. It's this is the town's copy, and what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to place this in the office of the town clerk in oh, the that's permanent good. record files, that's so good. that we always have it. That's Great. Good show. Great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Anything else, Fred? Or no, sir. That should do questions it. Questions for Fred? <coughs> I have a couple of little quick things, not necessarily for Fred. But are we meeting next Monday? Have you figured out what we're doing next Monday? We are not. No. 
Okay. And the health trust, property liability trust, I understand that there is some um, <coughs> excitement there. No, uh, couldn't be any excitement no. there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do we have any fill-ins or any... Uh, Phil has provided some information, some yes. of which I have forwarded to you, which purely fell into the category of, right. of, of information as opposed to something that may, mm -hmm. um, might get us into a, a um, public right to, right, right to know law as far as emails and whatever. I've also had a discussion with, with Mark, and what we're looking at is perhaps briefing the board on what's going on on, on January 27th um, um, at that meeting. So. Do you want to wait till then? Yes, <laughs> please. Well, the reason why I asked is because some of the things I heard via the grapevine sound more dynamic than that. Mm. Don't rely upon the grapevine in this particular case. I know, case. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. No debate. Okay. You had something else, Mary Louise? Um, Oh, and you have item K, Selectman's vote to recommend or not recommend Warren articles. Remember that we are recommending or not recommending to the public hearing. Well, that's the initial step, that the, that the right. statement should be that we are recommending or not recommending to the public hearing. Okay, but, but it's essentially the only vote that we will take unless something changes with a we Warren the article at delivery of session. Right. 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 But I think yeah. just as a suggestion, <coughs> right. the correct way to phrase that is to the public hearing. Okay. And uh, that, that cover it? <coughs> okay. That um, let's move on to <coughs> old business and Warren articles. Oh, um, you see a rather lengthy list here. That, that was simply my effort to make sure that we don't overlook anything. Yeah. The articles, um, you know, A through I on this, which starts with CBAs and High Street culverts, <coughs> of which we've already covered mm -hmm. tonight, is simply a function of articles that I identified as having language changes right. since the last time we met and to make sure that we're all in agreement on those language changes. Yep. So whatever. So that's the purpose. And then the other things were, again, there's an awful lot going on and I didn't want to overlook. Um, starting with, with item A, CBAs, there are three articles <coughs> on the warrant which we received Friday I'm a good time. Um, that did not exist in the previous revision which is based on our um, vote to ratify the um, Teamsters last Monday and our vote to accept mm -hmm. the fact finders recommendations on the fire 2664 and fire 3017 supervisors. Right. Um, those articles are, are we can take them one at a time. Twelve, the Teamsters, I reviewed it. I'm absolutely fine with it. Anybody have any concerns nope. with the Teamsters? Are we going to go down through them through a, a, an order and vote on them as we go along? We're going to vote on everything sequentially in conjunction with item K. We'll go through right through every article. We're not going to bounce day. around. Okay, how about Warren them. article number eight then? We're going to go through all the articles starting with number eight yeah. under item K on the agenda. Okay. We'll go from 8 to 9 to 10 so that we don't... When do you want to vote? At the end of going through them or that, as, as we do each All we are going, if you, if you take what I just said, all we are doing now is yeah. basically agreeing on the language that has changed or been added in the case of the three... Oh, okay. Three, okay. Okay. There's a difference between agreeing to language. You have to... It might yes. take us... You have to agree to language changes or right. new articles yes. before you vote yeah. whether or not you're going to recommend or not recommend yeah. them. No problem. Okay? No problem. So at any rate, we have the number 12, the Teamsters, number 13, the Firefighters Local 2664, yep. and number 14, the Firefighters Officers. Those are all new languages. I have no we, problems. We all, all set no with problems. that? Okay, that's fine. Um, DPW Equipment Replacement, um, Mark, you had made a, a we, minor change to we that. We fixed that last week, I thought. Uh, well, there's, oh. there's a, a little bit more language than that. There's the... The language, Mary Louise, that you were looking for me to get approved by the yes, uh, DRA, and they did indeed. Yeah. And also, uh, the uh, some language has been added uh, as to whether a trade-in is deemed prudent by the Public Works Director, the Town Manager, and the Board of Selectmen. If they saw the condition of the vehicles, they would not only deem it prudent, but they would say that the Director of Public Works is a miracle worker if he can get any money for those. We're going to add another one to the list. Yeah. Just went down this line. Whatever. So Whatever. at any rate, does Whatever. anybody have any concern with language changes to no. Article 17 cool. on the no. DPW equipment? Cool. We all set on that? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, 
We just cleaned up recreation. Recreation yeah. fund, just to confirm, that was number 22. Yep. I believe, see if you agree with this, Fred, Sir. or Mark, um, that, that all we need to do in the change to that language is to scratch the word fencing. Yes. I believe you're correct. Yes. Which article are you on? 22, the rec, rec. fund. Okay. The only change Lights. that I see to that is scratching the word fencing. The brilliant Line, line four under C, damaged fencing. Yeah. So it would continue to say damage signage. Right. right the, the fencing word would come out. Fencing and the word and. Okay. Correct. We all set then yes. on that one. Yes. Okay. Solid waste. We we had the discussion when Keith was here. Mm -hmm. Do we have a consensus to proceed with mm -hmm. that one? Uh, yeah. Let me let me just say, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is Article 28, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Regarding the uh, the third to um, uh, where it says to amend the third of those uh, on page 15 of 28. Mm -hmm. It says to amend Chapter 420, Article Roman 3, Solid Waste Management, Section 420-13, Operation, Subsection C, Operational Authority, by removing the following, and I put the word consecutive after following. Oh. The following consecutive two words. Good. Just so that uh, mm -hmm. clarifies it. The word and appears a number of times, and yep. you don't want right. to mm. take it out everywhere. Okay. Do we have a consensus then on the language in Article 28? Correct. I'm all set. Okay. Um, also, I would say, uh, just if, while we're on them, uh, it, when you go to vote on these, if I have any little changes, I'll just mention them at that time. Okay. If that's all right. Um, okay. On page 18 of 28, same article. Um, third line from the top, uh, there's the word substituting therefore. Strike the E on therefore. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Are we, then, are we all set then on the yeah. solid waste article? Yeah. Okay. Yes. But that was you the third, know third line from the top? Yes. Uh, th there's a phrase substituting therefore the word non recyclable. Yeah, you're on page 18? Page 18 of 28. Yeah. Third line starts deleting the word non recycled and substituting therefore. Take the E off of therefore. Take the E off therefore. <laughs> It's the second um, paragraph, third second, line. Second, oh, okay, second paragraph. I kept Richard. looking at the first one. Sorry. Yeah, I got it. Therefore, you want to take the E off? Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I'm all set. Thank you. <coughs> There's no problem with that, but don't forget that we just and it's disconcerting to have the article headings down on the bottom of the page. But on page 12, the are you comfortable that we finished that when we insta when we reinserted crossroads? You don't need to go back to that. I, I That's asked. All set. I, I don't believe we okay. do. Uh, we had a motion. Fred and I. Concurred yep. that he's yep. keeping Before notes on that change. It, I've I got notes as well. Yeah. So Before we go past it, right. I just but that, that one is yep. at this point includes crossroads okay. of 15,000 right. with a new, with an updated amount of 155, yep. 615. Okay. okay. What, um, I'm sorry, what number is the Gristmill Dam Restoration Funding Extension That's article? Great. 23, it says. Yeah, it's right along It's right. Article 23, yeah. page 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. This This is. Um, yep. I don't know to what extent you've used, you've changed this, Mark, from what um, Candace may have submitted, whatever, that this is essentially our first look um, mm -hmm. at this, at least coming from, from the town attorney and the town manager. I looked at it. I'm fine with it. Does anybody yeah, have I any concerns? Yeah, I have a problem. Oh. Okay. okay, so we're all set on that Did you one. want some more time on that, Mark? Warden? No, I'm no. all set. You're all set? Uh, okay. Thank you. Tree Warden. Unfortunately, with this version, with the warrant, we lost our table of contents at the start. Oh, then, right. Um, We're going to have to speak to the person who produced it, right? Well, no. It, you won't <laughs> have a table of contents anymore. Right. Um, what number was the uh, tree warden? Then? 34. Okay. Yeah, 34. And this is, again, our first official look. Yeah, at bottom the of page 22. The language on that. I <coughs> went through that. I have no yeah. issue with that. Do we have a straight uh, Second, yeah. second uh, line on the next page, 23, uh, yeah. section 3. Just strike the E on therefore. <laughs> that's I keep coming up. You stayed up late to do that, yes. didn't you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have no problem with the article. Okay. Um, cemetery markers and um, monuments restoration. Actually, this is a petition, petition. Yep. Um, warrant article, so all we will be doing this is voting to recommend or not Correct. recommend. Or I thought they always include that in their budget the last few years. What? No, they've actually had separate warrant articles right. for that. Yeah. Have they always had yes. separate yeah. warrant? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. in the past, for example, it was the um, 
what is it, the Pine? Pine yeah, Grove. Pine, pine, pine Grove. Grove. Yeah. Pine, pine Grove. Yeah. Okay. This through. one is Ring, which is up off a of park next to where <coughs> right. That's good. There. Okay. Okay. And each one done sequentially. Yep. Right. right. Who else you got? Any other Warnockles? I just put that <laughs> on there. If there's anything that I missed that, that may have changed that we needed to review. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shall I just do the little minor corrections when you go through to recommend them or not? Or would yeah. you like yeah. them um, now? How many do you have, Mark? Two or three. Well, let's just do them now. So. Okay. I was thinking you might say that. He wants to see us fish through all these um, Article 32. 32. Um, which is uh, martial arts weapons. Yep. Uh, uh, it just has a period and a question mark at the end. You want to strike the period? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, Article 33, the uh, yep. entertainment ordinance. Oh, God. Uh, on the bottom of page 21 of 28, line right above noise level standards. Yep. You have uh, boundaries of his slash her. I would put another slash and put its. I, I didn't follow. Where, where are we looking now, Mark? Page okay. 21. 21 of 28. Yep. yep. We're talking uh, now the, uh, at the, the added subsection A noise levels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second line starts out boundaries of his slash. So okay. on the next page. Okay. Knows. Now I see. Wait a minute, I'm on the next page. It's, yeah. it's on page 22. Oh, okay. Okay. And I got what a is different that? Number where is it again? It's, it's on the top of page 22, Mike. Yes. I'm sorry. I've got a different. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it should be unlawful. <coughs> you got the higher class copy. Oh, his slash her. You shouldn't have slash in there anyway, right? Yes. Oh, you can. Yes. His, yeah. Okay. Yeah. His slash her slash it's. it's. it's so premises. would it be comma or? No, no, no. And or? No. We, we can use a slash. Slash her slash it's. Okay. It's <laughs> more compact, yes. I mean, I like Slash, but I didn't know you could okay. use one on the world. Okay. What, what else? Next? What else you got? Mark? I think those are the only okay. two. Okay. Good. <coughs> All right. Let's okay. zip. Okay, through that. Mm -hmm. Implementation of, of tally votes. Tally votes, I asked Christina um, to include the RSA. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. This yep. is something that, that we've done in 2012 and 2013. Mm -hmm. um, just to clarify, and I'll, I'll read the important language out of the statute or whatever. Um, all votes of the governing body relative to budget items or any Warren article shall be recorded votes and the numerical tally of any such vote shall be printed in the town, school, district, or village district warrant next to the, next to the affected Warren article. Unless the legislative body has voted otherwise, which they have not in Hampton, mm -hmm. if a town or school district has not voted to require such tally to be printed in the town or school district warrant next to the affected Warren article, the governing body may do so um, on its own initiative. Mm -hmm. um, so again, okay. um, this is something that we've done the last two years. Um, the primary motivation um, for this, and I think it was me that brought it up in the first place in 2012, was transparency with the public and yep. the benefit associated with seeing a Warren article, and it was the CBAs at the time, yes. to see 5-0 by the Board of Select and 14-0 mm -hmm. um, yep. by the Budget Committee is, is um, Has an impact. A, a benefit. I'll also comment that, and, and Mark, you might want to comment if we've got the latitude or whatever, but I look back at 2012 and 2013 warrants, and what was interesting is in 2012, um, it appeared to me that we only took the tally vote or applied the tally vote to the money yeah. article. Yes. In 2013, we applied it to Everything. all um, yeah. articles. And what was kind of weird with the exception of one, I don't know if that was an oversight or whatever, but Article 30 did not have a tally. That was the one that had to do with bingo. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yes. not a, I don't know. I don't yeah. remember us whatever. purposely yeah. excluding it, but uh, looking at the warrant in the annual report, yeah. it, it's not um, yeah. there. Yes. So what, what you will see, if we do it the same way as 13, is for money articles, you will see the tally associated with the selectmen and the tally associated with the budget, budget committee, where the budget committee is not voting <coughs> on um, non-money articles. Yeah. You'll just see the selectmen on the non-money uh. I'd prefer just to restrict to the money articles, but that's personal preference. Yeah. Well, I would make a motion that we um, continue the the, <coughs> the um, practice of the last two years of including the tally vote um, on all of the articles. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, do we need a tally on that? Or <laughs> I don't no. think so. Okay, so we're going forward okay. with the tally 
um, across the board. Um, in terms of, um, and I'll look to Mark on this, I, I think first of all we have to decide who's keeping track here. Is, is it Mark or is it Fred or whatever, just so we make sure our record Probably is Probably both. <laughs> we usually do both. And okay. Uh, Are you talking zoning that. articles as no. well? No, 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 not no. zoning. Well, we can't do zoning articles. Yes. No. Yeah. No. We would asking. start with Article 8 and work through the balance. Oh, okay. okay. Um, the other, um, in terms of the process, I, I don't actually remember exactly the way we did it, but here's my suggestion and see if this works for, for Mark and Fred. Um, if I simply say in each one, all those in favor of recommending Article they were not recommending or whatever, yeah. um, and I guess abstaining is is an option, as in any uh, any vote. Okay. If, for example, if we end up with with a three two to recommend, then the result of that will be a um, the selectmen recommend with a three two tally. Yeah. Yeah. If there's another yeah. one where there's a vote and three are 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 not in favor of recommending. Then, then the vote will be not to recommend 3-2. That's the um, way it was articulated in the warrant in 2013. So uh, it basically, if it was to recommend, it would say recommend, and then if three voted in favor, okay. as an example, it would say 3-2. If, if the vote was 2-3 to recommend, then the way it showed up in the warrant was not to recommend 3-2. Okay. Uh, you do it exactly the way the, the uh, planning board does for warrant articles. As long as it's clear. So let's, let's, let's recommend let's or vote not to recommend. So let's go through let's the first. Go here. Let's go through the first one and see if we're yep. clear on that. And if okay. we are, we'll just keep moving through them. Okay. Um, starting with our Article 8, which is the operating budget. Um, I, I don't plan on reading these articles. No, please. Them oh, please. In, in front well, of don't you, read whatever. them here all night. Um, whatever. <laughs> all those in favor of recommending. All those opposed. So the vote is to recommend three two. Three two zero. Three two zero. Got it. Article nine, which is the SEA collective bargaining agreement. All those in favor of recommending. Five. Unanimous five zero zero. To recommend. Article ten which is the police sergeant's collective bargaining agreement. All those in favor of recommending? I have a hand up for okay. five <laughs> minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> good exercise for you. Okay. Um, well, all you have to do the, is the vote it. on Article 10 is 5-0-0 zero, zero yep. to recommend. Yep. Article 11, which is the police patrolman's Association, as opposed to the sergeants, whatever. <laughs> All those in favor of recommending? Unanimous, 500 to recommend. Article 12, two year collective bargaining agreement with the Teamsters. All those in favor of recommending? 500 to recommend. Article 13. has to do with local 2664 and the acceptance, a tentative agreement, because when both sides accept, it becomes a tentative mm -hmm. agreement, mm -hmm. but accepting the recommendations in the fact finders report. All those in favor of recommending, 500 to recommend. Article 14, essentially the same issue with the fact finders report, tentative agreement, only with firefighters local supervisors 3017. All those in favor of recommending, Five zero zero in favor of recommending. Article 15, the $400,000 for the Gristmill Dam. All those in favor of recommending. Opposed? Abstained. So that would be 401. 401 to recommend. Article 16, which is the cul-de-sac and the study of Meadow Pond, which we just discussed with Keith. All those in favor of recommending? Opposed? Yeah. Abstained? It's the culvert, not the cul-de-sac. Culvert, right? sorry. Five yeah, zero that's, zero. That's what are we doing on this? 5-0-0. Zero zero. Good. Ke oh. Phil, is that correct? You, I voted, in favor. you voted in favor? Yes, okay, 5-0-0. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, Article 17. 
the DPW vehicle purchase of a, of a um, <coughs> backhoe, front end loader, and a uh, sweeper. Mm -hmm. All those are in favor of recommending. Unanimous 500 to recommend. Article 18, $300,000 added to the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. All those in favor of recommending? 500 to recommend. Article 19. Uh -huh. Vote to rescind <laughs> Article 79E, colon 3. All those in favor of recommending? All those opposed? Vote is to recommend 320. Article 20, which is the okay. aggregate health and human services or, or charity articles or whatever, which was amended tonight to include crossroads at 15,000 to an amount of 155,651. All those in favor of Article 20 to recommend. 500 in favor, unanimous. Okay. Article 21, raise and appropriate the sum of $90,000 related to the Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund. All those in favor of recommending, 500. Article 22. $90,000 um, related to lighting and signage um, at Eaton Park, which we discussed with the rec director earlier, and just eliminating the word fencing. All in favor? Opposed? Vote is to recommend 3 to 0. Article 23 related to the 28,678 that would otherwise lapse on March 11th related to the um, Grist Mill building, whatever. All those in favor of recommending? Unanimous 500 to recommend. Article 24. Raise and appropriate sum of 10,500 um, from the sale of town owned cemetery lots and to transfer the sum to the uh, cemetery burial trust fund. All in favor? T recommending? Vote is to recommend 500. Article 25, raise and appropriate $10,000 for the Conservation Land Acquisition Fund. All in favor of recommending Article 25, unanimous 500 to recommend. Article 26, shall the town adopt to vote the provisions of Chapter 149A of the Re Aye. New Hampshire Revised Statutes, which essentially authorize the selectmen to perform all duties and possess all powers. Um, related to the sewers. All in favor of recommending Article 26. Unanimous 500 to recommend. Article 27. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to repeal its vote under Article 21, um, essentially changing the sewer connection fee um, to a fee of $300 per sewer connection. All in favor of voting to recommend Article 27. 500 unanimous to recommend. Article 28, all of the changes which we discussed earlier when Keith was here, yep. to the Solid Waste Ordinance, Chapter 420. All in favor of, of recommending um, Article 28? All opposed? Vote is to recommend 410. Okay, Article 29 related to accepting a number of streets, including Great Gate, Juniper, Necessian, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of recommending? Opposed? Vote is 500 to recommend. Article 30, similar accepting um, oh boy, streets. my favorite streets in here. <laughs> <laughs> including the portion of Huckleberry Lane um, from North Shore Road or whatever. All in favor? of recommending Article 30. That's a good part, right? <laughs> I just wanted to verify that. Vote to recommend 500 unanimous. Article 31, again, similar vote to uh, accept streets, including Briar Road, Lancaster, Mount Moccasin, and so on. All in favor of recommending Article 31. Unanimous vote oh. to recommend 500. Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm Article sorry. 32. Article 32 is related to martial arts, um, martial martial arts, arts. weapons and, and, and just yeah. simply substituting or removing the word mixed or whatever. Yep. All in favor of, of recommending Article 32. Unanimous vote is to recommend 500. 
Article 33. Article 33 relates to the amendments to um, Chapter 149, the entertainment license. Okay. All in favor of, of uh, recommending Article 33. All opposed? Vote is to recommend 410. Article 34. Article 34 is the article related to the tree warden. All in favor of recommending Article 34. Vote is unanimous, 500 to recommend Article 34. Article 35 relates to the discontinuance of the firefighting apparatus capital reserve. All in favor of recommending Article 35. Unanimous, 500 to recommend. You can actually be excused for one minute before you go to 36. Okay, right let's back. take a pause. We need a full house for these folks. Take a breather, too, to catch your breath. Mm. <clears throat> that, and I was talking with Warren Mackinson, too, on the firefighting apparatus capital reserve fund. They have to record, to report yes. that every single what? year. That's correct. Yes, to the Attorney General's office. So this means <coughs> they'll be able to clean it off the books. Right instead of having a zero fund continuing in there forever. Um, one, one thing that um, we'll, we'll get to the budget committee and what we're going to try and do to get the stuff to them by noon tomorrow or whatever. But I would, pr I would presume, Fred, when, when you guys go through your thing. Recommending, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, when, we, when you and Mark go through that tomorrow, that the Warren articles that we provide to the budget committee will contain the selectmen's rec recommendations yes, so in them so they can so have change. visibility to that. Right. We're, all, we're all set to do that right okay. now. Just for do it first thing in the morning. Thank you very much for waiting. Okay, moving on to Article 36. Mm -hmm. One meeting. Ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Article 36, which relates to a petition article, um, involves $80,000 on Holman Lane. All in favor of recommending Article 36. All opposed. Vote is to not recommend 140. Article 37, um, petition of John Nyan uh, and 25 residents, $3,000 to experience Hampton for the Christmas parade. All in favor of recommending Article 37. Unanimous, 500 to recommend. Article 38. Due to the increased request for services, <coughs> this has to do with the Child and Family Service article right. where they came in looking for an additional thousand um, to the five thousand that was in the um, Health and Human, Health services, and Human services aggregate article or whatever. We, we advised yep. them that if, if that um, you know, took place that we would be removing it from the, the article which we did. Yeah. Um, I believe that there's been communication between the town manager and Christina yes, and them suggesting to them that they yes. may want to have a Hampton resident show up at yeah. deliberative session and yeah. modify yeah. the amount yeah. uh, or whatever. So um, all in favor of voting to recommend um, Article 38. As is. No, uh, actually, uh, of course, this, this doesn't contain the magic words to raise right. an appropriate. Correct. Yeah. So this will have to be amended in some Correct. fashion. Right if it's to be implemented right. at the deliberative session. Right. Okay. Yes. Either way, at, at, at this point, um, I, I think we still need to take a yes. vote, yeah. okay? But obviously, if it's amended, we have an opportunity to change okay. our vote or whatever. Right. So all in favor of recommending Article 38? As is, okay. So we have all opposed, abstained. So you, were you, I didn't see a vote, Phil. You, I'm you sorry, in? I was in favor. You're in favor, yes, sir. So the vote is 4-1. Zero. Um, and what? Okay. Never mind. <coughs> okay. Article 39. Um, petition of Victor DeMarco and Richard Ballou. Um, Fisher House. More than twenty-five. Twenty-five thousand dollars related to the Fisher House um, program. All in favor of recommending Article 39. I've had questions on whether that has any relevance in New Hampshire, and I literally don't know. Um, my my comment. Is, is I had to think long and hard on this. Um, I've, I've always supported the aggregate article, mm -hmm. okay? I've always voted for it mm -hmm. in the voting booth. I have a concern as to what, and so with that said, I have a concern, nothing to do with the Fisher House, and there's another one that follows, mm -hmm. whether the Board of Selectmen ought to be 
in, in the role of recommending to the public what charities they should donate. For the ones that we've been doing for years and years mm -hmm. and whatever, I mean, th that's always made sense to me, but <coughs> adding new charities, um, I, I, nothing to do with these two. The ones that the board recommended <coughs> started out as Warren articles. Yes. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So I understand. But you have taken a posture that we're going to vote on all articles. Right, right. And I, I will just tell you it's because of what I just said. It's my intention mm -hmm. to abstain on, on, on additional um, charity because I just question if that's something that we ought to be telling the voters what, what to do what new one, yeah new ones to vote uh, on so uh, Mr. It, Mr. Chairman you tell the voters what to can you give us your brief rundown on your thoughts on this well uh, the, the 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 question of charity is one that is uh, time honored in Hampton mm -hmm. not only through uh, uh, municipal uh, government but through the uh, good graces of the taxpayers uh, we have uh, heard uh, eloquent uh, speech tonight about taking care of those that are less fortunate perhaps than some of us. Certainly the Fisher House and those that have uh, served their country um, and will never be whole uh, and their families are uh, equally deserving and hence my support. Thank you. So you think good. it's a, a good rep to vote? Yes, sir. Chair. Oh, yeah, okay. sir. Everything I looked at looked yeah. absolutely okay. above yeah. board, okay. whatever. Okay. okay. All in favor of recommending so Article 39. Okay. Opposed? Abstained. Vote is to recommend 401. Article 40, also a charity. Um, <coughs> Seacoast Family Promise, $7,000, um, whatever. So this All has potential ramifications as far as zoning ordinances and so forth are concerned. I don't know if Fred has any concerns about this, but if these. If the housing is taking place in, uh, say, without certificates of occupancy or other uh, situations, I understand some of the housing takes place in churches and so forth. And I just want to make sure the town is not um, is not liable for any situations that might arise over the manner in which this charitable function is being undertaken. That's a good point. The building inspector would have to inspect. Mm. Well, one of the things that came up before when this particular group or a similar group came right. along a few years ago was that they were supposedly, rumor and all that sort of thing, putting quite a few people in like the basement of a church. Mm. Well, they're out of the weather, but it doesn't necessarily follow the rules. Mm. Yeah. And that's a big concern for us. So I guess yeah. I, my concern is they didn't come in to talk to us about this, did they? Unless I missed it? No. no. They didn't come in to say anything to us, and I feel very uncomfortable about this whole thing. Okay. It's not that I'm against it, it's just I feel uncomfortable about it with the possible zoning, uh, zoning article, I mean zoning issues and occupancy and yeah. all that sort of thing. So. Well, maybe, vote. maybe they'll come to the uh, public hearing. Yeah. Well, we vote. You don't have to recommend it. Okay. Yeah. All, yeah. all in favor of voting to recommend Article 40. Opposed? Abstain. So the vote is to not recommend 302. Correct? We have two. Go ahead. Not to recommend three opposed. Right. Set? Set. Article 41, uh, petition warrant article looking to raise and appropriate $4,950 for the repair and restoration of cemetery markers at the Ring, yeah. Ring Swamp <coughs> Cemetery. All in favor of recommending Article 41. Unanimous to recommend 500. Article 42 is a petition warrant article um, related to the removal of a deed restriction in order to allow the installation of a higher fence. All in favor of recommending Article 42. All opposed? All abstain? I, I'm abstaining. I don't understand it enough that I can vote one way or the other. What's the vote? Um, 401. 401, yeah. 401. 401. Uh, Mr. Chairman, regarding the uh, vote that's been taken, uh, on those articles for which uh, you've not been briefed by petitioners, Right. Mm -hmm. uh, those are also actually going to be heard by the budget committee, That's I believe, true. tomorrow night. Yes. In other words, money related yeah. uh, articles. Related articles. Right. Yeah. 
I, I don't know if those groups are going to want to be alerted that, you know, there are a couple of opportunities coming up before the deliberative session, which may affect the recommendations or yeah. not. They should have been alerted when right. they turned in the petition, I would think. Well, they could be. I mean, they, it could yeah, be said I to them know. that tomorrow night the Budget Committee is going to yeah. be taking up warrant articles as, and it's going to be presumably taking some of the same votes that you are. Yeah. They may have some of the same questions. Well, they're only voting on the money articles, you understand. Understood. Yeah. That's all they're going to get. So. They're not but, right. for instance, uh, <coughs> Article 39 and, four and 40 are, uh, money. are money articles. Right. Right. Absolutely. And uh, in case there's some need to, mm -hmm. to advocate better for them, yeah. that's an opportunity. Um, another point I wanted to say was that... Uh, Selectman Woolsey has said that th what your recommendations are are recommendations to the public hearing. Right. Um, I don't know if the chair was planning to notice a meeting of the board for the night of the public hearing so that if you, you could take a vote to affirm your recommendations or change any of them. I don't know as your meeting... I, I, know, I know that Christina is noticing a meeting of the board the night of the public hearing simply be in anticipation that there would be a quorum um, at the meeting. Right. I am, I'm not anticipating at all planning on taking another vote on the 21st. But it, but it is an option for both the Budget Committee and right. the Board of right. Selectmen if, or if, the school board. If somebody board, wants to bring that up, If I'm during the discussion at the public hearing something comes up that makes if, the majority change If a member wishes to request I, that on an yeah. individual I don't anticipate article. it, but yes. Right. But anyway, and if you could confirm that with Christina. And I'm sure the chairman will today. make it clear at the beginning of the hearing. Right, that that's an exception. That the no plan to there. go rolling through. Right. all of these, but right. you just so confirm that she is noticing. Good point. Before, before you she leave the already. topic then, the recommendations you've just made will go forward to the deliberative session unless there's a change, change. Correct. at the public hearing. Gotcha. Correct. Uh, okay. may I add, can I add something to what Mark said, Mr. Chairman? You said that it'll give another opportunity to plead their case or whatever, advocate for their case, whatever the word you use. Mm -hmm. Correct. If they're asking me and this board for their vote on an issue, here's the place. I understand, Thank but what, what I'm saying is that there's going to be a similar vote taken by the Budget Committee. But I'm not going to the Budget Committee. Now. I understand, oh. but I'm, I'm just saying if, the, if, if, if you have the kind of questions you've had tonight, yes. mm -hmm. the Budget Committee is going to have a similar question. Yes. Right. If perhaps yeah. we ought to alert the petitioners to say if you would like to have a more informed recommendation, they ought to come tomorrow. Oh, for their benefit. Well, they've the already been notified yeah. to be there tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Right. They have been notified to be there tomorrow? They have been notified to, that the Budget Committee will, yeah. will go over their articles yeah. Yeah. for money yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. They've been notified of that. Next step would be the And with Mr. DeMarco's Excuse experience on Yes, for tomorrow and for the public yeah. hearing. Yeah, right. And for the public hearing. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. Right. Okay. And with we'll Mr. Call DeMarco's them experience on the budget what committee, the he would public know. To okay. Um, we have one other article. One of the things I asked Christina to do is, is to alert me through Fred or whatever if any articles came in today such that we could vote on those. Um, at this point, we have a plan. Uh, we have a tentative meeting notice for tomorrow at 5.30, yeah. should any articles come in tomorrow right. to address those, just that article or articles. So we'll get um, a call. If, if none come in tomorrow, then there is no meeting tomorrow, and we'll figure out what Christ okay. Christina will notify us. The way I'd like to um, work that with five, Christina five is she only notifies us if it's necessary. Okay. Right. Is that All right. fair enough? So okay. if we don't hear anything, there is no meeting. Now, there is one um, which came in today. The signatures have not been verified at this point, but in the interest of avoiding a meeting tomorrow, I would like to vote to recommend or not recommend this particular article. It can be contingent on the verification of 25 registered voters mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Um, and I'll read the article. And this, I guess, ultimately will become... 43. Theory, 43. Okay, I'll read it. On petition of Mary Louise Wolsey and at least 25 other registered voters to see if the town will <laughs> vote to direct the Board of Selectmen to discontinue all public collection of condominium, commercial, and retail waste, parentheses, trash and recycling, no later than September 15, 2014. Um, all in favor of voting to recommend this petitioned article. 
Opposed? Abstain none. So the vote is to not recommend one four zero. You missed a great opportunity. Okay. Um, again, we're through everything. If we don't hear anything, um, um, yeah. and, back to and the. And I would suggest that everybody be cognizant of that. Okay, simply yes. because an article, if you're available by a yeah. phone or whatever, if an article should come in at 10 minutes to 5 or whatever, um, we've got to be available here for yeah. what will you probably be a 10-minute meeting. You said you're going to come by phone. My question is, when are we going to call us by phone? After five I'm not going to be sitting around all afternoon next to the phone. Is would would we like to set a time? Let me ask a question. Maybe we're better off. Like Mike said, picking a time of five o'clock and getting a call one way or the other yeah. at five o'clock. Five right. o'clock is five correct. Right. Is that a little yes, bit? exactly five. Exactly five. Okay, sounds good to me. Thank you, Mr. I want to go home too. So, okay, five o one. Um, <laughs> for him, if it's in, in five one second, it's too late. Um, I go. have. Um, <laughs> I'd like to, with the, with the agreement of the board. I'd like to make a change. One other thing I had on there. Item L, Selectman's assignment of articles to move at the deliberative session. I'd like to defer that to the meeting yes. of the 27th. Yes. I don't think we just yes. simply we don't De need to um, give us time to think. Plus, the budget committee might whatever. bring up some interesting points. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. we're all set on that. Yeah. Um, tentative meeting petition warrant articles tomorrow at 5:30. We already talked right. about that. I just wanted to make sure everybody's aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, Christina was having a little trouble when I talked to her today getting everybody to get back to her so I'd just like to confirm we've got a meeting um, tentatively set for the approval and signing of the 2014 warrant as well as the selectman's picture to the yep. town report yep. on January 22nd at 4.30. Correct. That should be a fairly that quick meeting. That was okay meeting. with me. Yep. Can you make that, though? Yeah, and I'd like Fred to be in the picture with us. Can we have Fred in the picture with us? Oh, you want to break a camera? Fred? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do that on my own. goes on the town manager. I know. I just, okay. I just wanted to get it out there that we wanted Fred. Okay, so we can confirm back to Christina yes, and that we're all set. We will. Okay. The 22nd and, um, at 4.30 in the afternoon. Yes, just, sir. Just so no, we've yep. got so much going on, nothing falls through the cracks. I don't think she had noticed that at this point because she was yeah. waiting to hear from right. a couple of you. So we'll see you guys time tomorrow morning. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, Terrific. Getting information to the budget committee yes. or whatever. Um, I'd like to talk about this a little bit. Um, well, here we go. There was some concern expressed at the budget committee last week, both in their Tuesday and their <laughs> Thursday meeting relative to the availability of, of, of information. I didn't see the, the Tuesday meeting. I caught the end of the Thursday meeting, and, and, and i just like to kind of say a few things and basically kind of lay out a plan. Um, past practice for finalizing warrant articles, and the concern was that they don't have mm -hmm. final mm -hmm. warrant articles. Past practice for finalizing warrant articles has been the selectmen's meeting the day before the statutory cutoff date, which is the second Tuesday in January. Mm -hmm. This year, the second Tuesday in January is tomorrow. What we're talking about is tonight's meeting, and right. that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's what we plan to do. Um, I can recall having countdowns in December where we said there's four meetings before right. yeah. January 13th and, and so on and so forth. I only saw the tail end of the meeting, and I don't know, Phil, did you want to elaborate on that at all? Or? The floor is yours, Mr. Okay. Chairman. <laughs> um, historically, at least for the past five years, the Budget Committee has held their public hearing on a date following yes. the Warren Article statutory cutoff date. Correct. Okay? Yep. 2014, they initially scheduled the public hearing for January 9th, the week before the second Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody picked up on that last week. I didn't until I, I saw the concern that was expressed uh, at I Tuesday and Thursday's meeting. Um, and speaking with Christina, when January 9th was initially set for this year's public hearing, they were just looking at last year's j date of January 10th, oh. as opposed to looking at the second Tuesday mm -hmm. and where it falls yeah, or yeah, whatever. In 2013, the second Tuesday fell on January 8th. That happens to be the earliest possible mm -hmm. date that the second Tuesday can fall. This year, the second Tuesday is January 14th, yeah. the latest possible date <laughs> that it can yeah. fall. Okay, that's just the way it works. That's right. the way the year shifts. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. scheduling the, the public hearing before the cutoff date is it's, it's problematic because what it does, it creates a potential requirement for a supplemental public mm -hmm. hearing yeah. to address any petition warrant articles that right. may come in, money articles that may come in after the initial public hearing. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants two public hearings. No. The Budget Committee is now scheduled for January 21st. Yep. They have requested that the final money articles be available by noon tomorrow. I called Eileen last Thursday just to let her know 
that it may be a problem. Mark at that point was scheduled for a hearing at the BTLA yeah. and was not available tomorrow. However, Mark told me this, this afternoon that trial for tomorrow was actually canceled. Right. Mark is now available to work with Fred, and my understanding is, is that Mark and Fred are committed um, mm -hmm. to make the appropriate changes to the warrant based on our actions. Yeah here tonight, and, and I, I think that there's, am I correct, to some level of optimism that you can have it available by noontime? I believe th where we are in the process now for the Budget Committee's copies, that we'll have that finished before the department head meeting at 9.30. Okay. Committed is the right word. Committed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you say you're going soon. to conquer, huh? No? <laughs> um, so, at any rate, um, I will volunteer to be the selectman rep selectman's rep to tomorrow's budget committee meeting to, to help work out this for the future. I'm familiar with the now, anyway, with some of the details of yep. Second Tuesday and all that, and qu quite frankly, I was planning, uh, I think I needed to be there anyway, s simply to address any questions related to the CPAs that mm -hmm. um, may pop up. So if you're all, if we have a consensus, I'll attend the um, meeting tomorrow, the budget committee yeah. as the selectman's rep. Yes, and, and thank you, Mr. Um, Chairman. Just, just a one on, on a scheduling sure. note, uh, I have a conflict on the 21st as well, so I will not be able to attend. So you can uh, okay. make that allocation <laughs> the, as well. The please. 21st is the public yeah. hearing. Yeah. I think at, at a minimum, um, yeah. Mary Louise will attend. I'm always there. As, as, sure. as the alternate rep, and I suspect that we may even have a quorum, but yeah. whatever. Either way, Mary Louise. I'll be there. We, we, all right, you said we're going to notice that, right? Yes. Thank right, you. yeah. Thanks, Christina. We'll notice any meeting where, where I'll probably go to the public hearing just so I can hear I, people I'd also make, make a, a couple of other comments, and I will pass this on to the budget Complaints. committee tomorrow, because I'm not mm -hmm. sure they, they know this, but um, we took a lot of positive steps this year to improve the process associated with Warren articles. We organized all of the Warren articles into a single MS Word document with a table of contents and agreed that it was a public document. Christina produced 22 revisions yeah, yeah, of this yeah. MS Word document, the first being on May 30th and the most recent one this past Friday. We began including Warren articles on our agenda every week going mm. back to late August. Okay? We sp scheduled a special Warren article meeting, you may recall, on November 22nd to try and catch up. Mm -hmm. We felt we were being behind, falling behind. And beginning with the December 19th revision, a column titled Date Finalized mm -hmm. was added to the table yeah. of contents, identifying yeah. the date that we considered specific warrant articles essentially complete. So I'm, you know, I, I want to make sure that, that the um, budget committee is aware of that. It's my assumption that, that we would mm -hmm. um, continue with this same process, maybe one that even has further improvements next year. Um, and I just want them to know that that exists. I want to suggest one more comment. We have gone bent over backward to not place warrant articles on the warrant that are incomplete, poorly drafted, or poorly, uh, poorly set up for this point in time. We've tried to have everything on there that is fine-tuned, polished, and we have pulled those that we think are not proper. I'll make it one comment if I may, Mr. Chairman. I like the idea that what we did with the revisions is we along as the suggestion was to put the date on each revision, mm -hmm. which I think that makes it yeah. f easier for people to follow. And the other thing I'll make a comment on is when I was on the Budget Committee, looking from that point of view, I really couldn't see any reason why they couldn't be done earlier. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I mean, I know we did <coughs> a pretty good job this year. I think we could have gotten them done a little bit earlier. One observation I made, Mike, on that, and I looked at it from the standpoint of what we targeted being the, the January mm -hmm. 13th, tonight's meeting or whatever, mm -hmm. to complete it. W one of the problems you have is you say, okay, you know, why could, one of the things I ask myself, why could we have, for example, not had them done on January 6th mm -hmm. or whatever? Right. One of the problems that you run into is you, if you start working your way back mm -hmm. from January 6th, First week back, you've, you've got a holiday. In this mm -hmm. particular year, you've got a holiday that's right smack dab in the mm -hmm. middle of the week, and you've got people taking vacations mm -hmm. on both sides. You had a snowstorm. You go back to the week prior to that, okay, so you've holiday. got a holiday. Yeah. Again, so Christmas, right totally in the middle of the week. You've got people mm -hmm. that take vacations on Christmas yeah. and so on and so forth. You work your way back to, to, to Thanksgiving. Yeah. You've got a holiday with two holidays. So three of the last, to the, to the <coughs> point of getting it done earlier, three of the six weeks, Mm -hmm. Prior to that, yeah. you, you've got limited availability, and quite frankly, most of this getting it done is, is really all about the availability of staff time, Fred's time, Mark's time, Christina's mm -hmm. time, Mike Schwartz's time, or whatever, and other priorities yeah. Yeah. that they've right. got to deal with on a day-to-day on -day yeah. basis. 
There's a lot of them. Right. Oh, I won't debate any of that with you. I'm just a thinking. Lot, a lot, a lot. My thinking was if we started <coughs> on the whole process, the whole process, you say it's going to take X number of weeks. It's going to end on January 13th mm -hmm. or January 6th. And if you n sort of know that that from experience, it takes this long mm -hmm. with staff and so forth, then if you started two weeks earlier, for example, you should finish two we weeks. We started on May 30th. Yeah. <laughs> but, Michael? There's no reason why you can't start at the end of March. <laughs> uh, actually, <laughs> we've already started this year's Warren articles, so. Fred and I were discussing next, one of next year's Warren articles. Good one show. Of Get out of the way. But, but you got to say, I'm impatient too, Mike, and I used to say the same thing when I sat on the Budget Committee. However, what I have found is that when you have an, a draft of an article, it spawns corrections and extra thoughts right. that you need to incorporate. And the next thing you know, it takes time. And I don't want to ever put an unfinished, half-witted article before I agree the public. With that I want it really polished and fine-tuned. I agree with that. But since and the I beginning of time of when selectmen have created <laughs> war knuckles, they've had that problem. Right. That's nothing and new. That's why you've seen some, perhaps, articles that haven't been. Was that a popular occurrence when you were saying that, that haven't been <laughs> fine-tuned as they might? Okay. Any other uh, old business? Nope. New business. First on Plodzik and Sanderson Professional Association Accountants uh -huh. and Auditors Auditing Does Services. That mean we have to fill that out? Or, I didn't quite understand that. Is, um, isn't Mike filling that out? I filled it out yep. and 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 sent a copy to Plodzik. I copied um, Mike. Don't. I copied Red. Whatever. My understanding is that all selectmen should be filling that out. Really? Okay. Oh. It, well, it, put it this way. It asks questions like, "Are you aware of any fraud?" Okay. okay. Oh, okay. I, I my answer head. was no, but I think they're looking to I'll have, have to all out, selectmen. I, I would think they'd like input from everybody. Yeah. When oh. can we get that to you? Oh. As soon as possible. It, 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 yeah. took, it took me about no ten minutes. No, I mean, I just don't. I just want to know if it's is it too late. That's the first oh no, 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 okay. no, 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 no. It's the first oh. time I've it's seen. It's too late. That. I missed it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, in all it's, years, it's been they've been doing the auditing. Yeah. That's the first time yeah, I've seen I, I, it. I won't, I'm not sure if it's been around the entire no, time. No, no. And we did it last year. I think. I think we all signed it last year. At any rate, to the issue at hand. Okay. We we have a letter, and essentially, my interpretation, Mark, Fred, correct me if I'm wrong. Is is what they're basically looking for us to do is 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 um, agree to and confirm the terms of engagement. Uh, yes, sir. that's them. correct. Mm -hmm. um, any questions on the the letter or whatever? No, I agree with the. Uh, okay, I, I have I have a couple. Um, let me look back. It's just Saturday or whatever. One was have the other selectmen responded to plaza and say, and so we've covered that, and, yeah. and I believe the the expectations. They we all will. Do. You can yeah. fill out the word document, and then send an email back to them, or you okay. can print a hard copy, whatever you chose to do. Mm -hmm. um, agreed the the um, agreeing in the terms of engagement. Who are we authorizing? Because this is going to end up in a motion. Who are we authorizing to sign? Um, this. Anyone you want. Usually it's Mike that's, uh, or I that. Uh, okay, so we're looking for a motion to authorize yeah. the town manager to sign. That's fine. Yeah. Um, question, Fred. We've negotiated a fee on a multi year basis um, with Plod and Sanderson. Yes, that sir. Do, you know, that doesn't mean that mm -hmm. we don't agree to the terms each year. Right. Wh wh where do we stand in that multi year cycle? This will I think be the last year of that the third cycle. year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we'll be rebidding again. So we'll be going yeah. out to bid um, for the 2015. Right. Um, yes, sir. 2014 audit, 14. which takes place yeah. in 15. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, would somebody like also to Also move to authorize the town manager to sign the releases to resolve the court case of Harrington versus D'Angelo. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. You're, you're you want to head. talk? You just you you head. Just jumped ahead head. of the agenda <laughs> item. It, it's the terms of, 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 the of, the of engagement the with the audit. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. That's what we're doing. Oh. The audit. Well, I thought we did the audit fast. <laughs> no motion. Okay. You made it go too fast. Make a motion no. again, Brad. Let's, Let's try that motion. You said it's not due until next year. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The 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 the, the <laughs> pricing was agreed on a three-year basis, yeah. but there's all kinds of other details in the terms of engagement here. Yeah. I will make a motion um, to authorize the town manager to sign um, the letter confirming our agreement with the terms of the. Of engagement with Plodzik and Sanderson for the 2013 audit. I'll second. Seconded, seconded by Selectman <laughs> Pierce. Sele seconded by Selectman <laughs> Pierce. You didn't want to let all the emotions. Right. All, all in favor. <laughs> Unanimous. Okay. You're here, Fred. 
Next I, issue, authorization of the okay. comment. Here we go. Sign. Here we go, my Louise. I have to say okay. that all over again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's my gavel. Okay. Um, authorization of the town manager to sign releases to resolve court case of Harrington versus D'Angelo and Hampton. Mark, did you want to speak to that at all? Uh, yes. This is a, there was a litigation that was pending for some time over an incident that occurred August 2, 2012. The yes. town was not initially named as a defendant in the case, but was added only very recently. Uh, the case ends up being resolved. Uh, without the town paying any money whatsoever, nor is its insurer paying any money whatsoever. Okay. Nevertheless, because we were named as a party, it's important that there be uh, releases signed among all parties, not only to avoid any liability on our part for mm -hmm. the underlying case, but to avoid any liability for what they call contribution mm -hmm. among the jointly right. named parties. defendants. Yeah. And so uh, there are actually two releases that the uh, that need to be signed by we're suggesting the manager uh, one is a release between the plaintiff and the town mm -hmm. and the other is between the co-defendant and the town okay so this uh, brings closure to the does. entire process it does I move to authorize the town manager to sign on the town's behalf the two releases that have been reviewed and approved by the town's defense counsel in the case of Kathy and Timothy Harrington versus Augustine D'Angelo as trustee of the Augustine F. <coughs> and Linda M. D'Angelo Revocable Trust in the town of Hampton. Which said releases will be exchanged for releases signed by the parties to the case that release the town from any liability in this matter? Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Sletman Pierce. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Any other new business? One quick one. I was speaking with the school superintendent a couple of days ago, and she asked if it was possible to have their tec their technical uh, gentleman, um, whose name I forget at the moment, uh, participate as a member of the uh, cable TV committee. Would you think on that? Collectively? I, I, don't, I don't have to think of it. I, I think it's a good idea. Oh. Why not? I, I've crossed my mind mm -hmm. several times in the past or whatever. Would well, you uh, want to put that on a subsequent agenda, or because I, I think it's a good idea yeah, as well, and probably. I was asked to bring it up, so yep. my suggestion is is you brought it up. Why don't you touch base with uh, Brian McCain? Um, oh, okay. Get his get Brian's input, and, and you then have it on a subsequent let's put it agenda? on a you know okay, let me know, yeah. let Christina know, whatever, and put it on a future agenda. Okay, thank you. The only so problem you might run in if they have say five members, he might make a six. Then you uh, might have to well, I'll, I'll do something with, about that, maybe. I'll check with Brian. Maybe, probably not, but maybe. Let's see how it works. Yeah. Okay. Any other new business? Consent agenda. The consent agenda has one item. It involves seven, Nine, seven the new credit, veteran seven. Um, tax credit applications, which oh, yeah. have been yeah. reviewed by uh, oh, Ed much. Tinker. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. Mary Louise has made yeah. a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. All in favor? Unanimous approval the consent agenda. Any Did closing comments? Yes, um, I have a closing comment. Everybody's invited down to some place for a nice refreshment after the meeting because I have something to celebrate instead of the foreign loan mo mood I've been in for the last few days. If you, if you would speak a little bit more succinctly so I can understand what you just said. That well, I deliberately talked like that so you wouldn't understand. Oh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, no, everybody's invited out for a refreshment after the meeting if they would like, and I will pick up the tab. Yeah. I'm um, celebrating something of a private ma nature. I have one closing comment, and it's just bringing up a, um, an issue, maybe a future um, agenda or whatever, but I, I think we ought to begin the discussion with Dredd in terms of the MOU that applies to 2014, and I have two suggestions in that and see what the board's thoughts are. One, let's basically try as to change as little as possible simply because so we don't I spend tons and tons place. and tons of time um, going around in it's circles or whatever. The, the, the second thing is, is I would request that we make sure that the language and the amount associated with, with them delivering trash to the transfer station is such that it covers our cost, and, and that's not in dispute. There was right. a bit of a dispute on that last year, so I think we have to make sure that the language right and the amount is based on what Keith has calculated or right. whatever. Yep. But, uh, uh, wasn't there a couple of other little issues that I came up along, like 
Wasn't there something about the police and the on state property and tickets and so forth? That's something between the police department and the attorney general's office. So we don't need to. No, it has nothing to do with dread. Okay. I have a okay. comment. I refuse to engage in any such nonsense unless they will get their tailbones in here and sit down and look us in the eye and talk about it in public. Period. Okay. I will make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. At 9.48 p.m. All in favor? Well. Unanimous. Okay, we're adjourned.